Welcome, Welcome to Snowmobile Sessions Live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. We're the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions Live is brought to you by Energy Power Sports. They're Oakville's full-line BRP dealer with sales and service to all BRP models and so much more. Make sure you go over on YouTube after the broadcast. Just search up Energy Power Sports, find their channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell all your friends that channel is growing and so are they. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, it's also brought to you by the fans. Last year, last week, a year, <laughs> already too many ballistic brews in me. Last week, a few fans found that little dollar sign in the chat window. They hit it and shared some love. Matthew Nicholson kicked it off with a $2.79 donation. Uh. And then <laughs> Dustin Ingram, he followed up with a five pounder, said, can't wait to see the number one snowmobile picks in this season. Hashtag XCR Polaris. And then Bruce Stewart responded with another five bucks saying, I got your next beer, Gary. Corey Brock, he topped the mountain with great to be back and get ramped up for her. Cheers. Yeah, so that's that. And don't forget, the fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. We got an exclusive offer for Snowmobile Session fans only. If you uh, fill your shopping cart with studs and backers and you click on the free <coughs> toolkit, add it to the cart, use the coupon code SNOW, and you'll get the uh, free toolkit, no charge, with that purchase. FastTrack.co. I'll tell you more when we get to the fan photos. There we go, Rich. How's it going, buddy? Good, bud. How are you? Good to be here. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I gotta see tonight. if this is it will be there you there go. for all my boys out there um yeah so uh we'll uh we'll get right into it i got the, the there's some buzz going on in the chat about ballistic brew yes. we talked about it a bit last year and uh it's a barmy blonde um brew and cory brock nice. popped by on the weekend and he's he's got a few that he's uh um pounding back tonight we'll see, nice. see if it's him a bit barmy as well <laughs> it's working for me so anyway let's bring in our guest it's uh john sherrard and he's from accelerated technologies he's uh the go-to guy for snowmobile suspension and number one in north america i'd say and some of our fans out there sent me some love for him this week uh greg from some time is now he's uh he's used your services i know neil owens another big fan of yours um he's uh he's always uh um, bringing his sleds into you, and I'm sure there's more in the chat. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much for having me, uh, Gary. It's, I'm excited to be here. That's great. We're excited to have you. Absolutely. Let's see what some of the fans are actually saying in the chat here right now. We got uh, Brad Hitchcock. He was waiting patiently, and he was asking if everyone has a cold one ready. Neil Owen says, welcome, John. I hope things are well with you, Jen, and all your family and staff. Yeah, thank uh, you, Neil. Whisper. Neil, we got Neil hooked on the Kool Aid a few years ago, and now he comes and sees us every year with all his new toys. So uh, uh, he's become a good friend as well. Uh, thanks for joining in, Neil. That's awesome. He's the reason you're here too. He said uh, he was instrumental in hooking this up. Um, Corey says he's in there. He's got a cold mud brats ballistic barmy blonde nail going. He likes to take a barmy blonde home. That's what I heard. Um, and uh, sometime is now all of Garden Gnome. Hello, all. We got uh, Brad Hitchcock, uh, Bruce Stewart. What's up, guys? Jumpman Jay's in the house. Of course he is. Hey, fella, he's on a night on nights all month, but I'll be trying to tune in and keep up. And uh, what else we got? Michigan. Hold it. I there won't even go. talk about them yet. But uh, <laughs> who else we got in there? Can you get a few more cats? Who else have I missed here? Sled Addicts. Bruce Stewart. Sled Addicts, of course. Yep. Awesome. Maritime Snow Riders. And the Michigan <laughs> Outlaws. 
Yeah. It's important to have the sound effects tonight because we got some awesome fan photos from from the fans and uh, uh, BKD six ninety four. I'll find out what what I can do to make my spe- suspension better for me. Of course, absolutely. You can. Got the best yeah. guy in the so, house. Yeah. So th- give us a uh, a five second tour of uh, a, a, a summary of what you do, John, and and then uh, we'll have a look at some fan photos and get the show well, going. I um I think. What we're best probably known for is 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 a relationship with the customer after the dealer. Uh, the dealer will do a great job, you know, selling them uh, their machine and the equipment and some oil and uh, you know dealer support that kind of thing. But uh, I find the dealers really aren't uh, don't have the exposure or the experience to really help them set the machines up for each individual rider. And that's where we've gotten uh, a good reputation in our understanding of how the, the chassis work and, um, and, and mating, them, mating them to the customer. We really try to listen to each individual uh, complaint or concern and, uh, and listen to their riding style and what they're using the sled for, how much gear they take, what kind of um, snow they ride on, where they ride. And then we set up the machine uh, for that. But that's just a kind of tip of the iceberg. I think the real value is when we take the hour or so at the end of the uh, setup to, to kind of train the rider, be it a, a guy or girl, on, on how to adjust uh, each individual component on the machine. And you really see the light bulb go off when they start to understand Oh, you know, what does rebound do? And nobody's ever explained to me what the coupling blocks do and in, in detail. And why is there six holes in my limiter strap and I'm always in hole number one? Uh, that kind of thing. We, we try to give them, make sure they leave with as much information as they can digest. And, and their, their snowmobiling experience really starts anew sometimes after they leave our place and, uh, and understand uh, their machine a lot better and their enjoyment you know, uh, really skyrockets. They, we kind of give them an idea on what they do when the trails get beat up or, or when you pass a groomer and the machine starts darting all over the trail, what's going on there and, and how to correct it. So that's, that's kind of a quick, quick kind of what we do here. And, you know, we sell a lot of good products that help us do that job better. Um, but we think the key is education. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, you're not just snowmobiles. You're into what other power sports do you cater in? Well, our, our history was from professional superbike racing. I, I raced for Yamaha for 10 years as a, a Grand Prix rider. Um, uh, I've got a couple of Canadian championships under my belt. And then, and then I quit that uh, after 10 years and was hired immediately by Honda to run their factory uh, uh, team and so I started building bikes for Honda Canada, and then um, from there I transitioned to AMA Superbike Champion Picot's team, and we we worked with Kawasaki and Suzuki, did a stint with Buell and Harley Davidson. So our real roots uh, are on paved racing, <clears throat> and and it really taught us a lot about you know compression and rebound and squat and weight transfer and grip. You know, and then we, I was always a snowmobiler in the background and, you know, in my, in my off season. And, and I always kind of was trying to apply what we were learning in the summer to what, what I did in the winter. And, you know, back, back then in 20, 2010, that area, you know, you, you could adjust your preload on your machine, but all the other adjusters were kind of clouded in, in mystery. So we, we, uh, we kind of got rolling and, and from there we started doing, excuse me, ATVs and side-by-sides in the summer. And that further uh, gained us knowledge and spring support and, uh, you know, how, how these vehicles operate. So it's, it's really neat. We've got a, we've got a real diverse background of, of experience that helps us understand what's going on on these snowmobiles. Well, that is awesome. Right and it's amazing too, John, because you can explain how the suspension works you know, to the average person, like, let's be honest, not everyone knows the detailed workings of the suspension. So when you learn how to do it properly and adjust it, it makes a huge difference, right? Oh, yeah. You know, and we've had the opportunity to, to test and test and test and test. And we'll, we'll take an idea that we have and we, we head off and we, we take it right to the end 
and see what the negatives are of, of, of any particular adjustment. So when I sit down and talk to my customers, I'm confident I've got a you know, really good understanding of, of why the machine is riding the way it is. And I understand their complaint because I've been there. You know, we've, we've all been on that crappy snowmobile that's, and we've pound in hours and hours on a beat up trail and we're ready to, we could sell that thing for a dollar if somebody would buy it at that point in the forest. But yeah. then you- Oh, so you rode my sled then. You, know, you, you, actually, you, you rode my old Yamaha. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know, uh, but, but yeah, then, then you kind of come back to the shop and you kind of investigate what's going on. And we, we talk about data acquisition and, and that's a big word, but it comes down to an O-ring or a zip tie we put on the shock shaft of your ski shock. And then as the, as the shock operates, it drives that zip tie down and it stays on the shock shaft as a memory device. And that can help you understand, hey, I, I thought my shock was doing pretty good, but it bottomed leaving the driveway. And, and all of that impact I'm feeling in the handlebars uh, is because the springs are wrong or the, the shocks failed or something. So, so yeah, we have a lot of fun uh, learning, learning, learning. We learn every day in here and with every new tool we invest in gives us the opportunity to further understand some, some you know, item that might have had a little bit of a cloud of mystery to it. So, uh, so yeah, it's a pretty fun uh, place to be. So. And, and it makes a difference so, when you you're... Sorry, Gary, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yep. It makes a difference too when you get the your your suspension dialed into the way like your weight, the way you ride. Like it, it must make a huge difference. Like can you would you I don't know what the proper way of asking this. Like the average sled that comes from the factory, it's set up for middle like it's probably it probably doesn't cover half the people that are riding on it, I would suspect, right? Rich, if you're hundred and ten pounds, they're perfect. Right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you've weighed the average North American snowmobiler, but if I if I had a scale at my front door, it would probably say 230, you know, okay. 190, 190, 180 are, are featherweights in this sport. And yeah. uh, we had three guys in one day that were 350 pounds. And, and they, you know, the one guy was big, but the other two were just perfectly proportioned big dudes. And and uh, they get on their, uh, you know, their renegade and, and they bought 12 inches of travel at the dealer and they're using seven of it sitting on it. And they're one inch from the coupler blocks and it's bang, 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 bang going down the trail and they're ready to sell the thing. They, they hate it. And, you know, for 200 bucks, we can put in the right torsion springs and they look at me like I'm a superhero. And it's just like, we just put the right springs in it. You know, we wish the dealer was a little bit, well, we do and we don't. It keeps us going, but but uh, you know we we'd all we've all also uh, offered to train some dealers on just baseline setup, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I, what I was going to ask is that uh, um, do you have to be in person to deal with you? Like, obviously, I, I know some of the people that reach out to me are south of the border, so I, I take it. Can you just do off of? Hey, I weigh two hundred thirty pounds, and and. Yeah you know, this is a sled I'm riding. Can you, can you tune it that way? Or do you have to be in person? No, that's what our phone is for. Um, we have so many great customers in the U S and, uh, out in, um, uh, quick example. We, I, the phone rang one Friday just after lunchtime and it was five guys from New Brunswick with a phone sitting on the, one of the sled seats. And we had a conference call and, uh, they were, they, these guys were all on like sidewinders and, uh, and big four strokes and they were having a particular tough time on the trail and reached out to me and I kind of walked them through uh, some baseline setups to get them going. But if I, if I know the rider's weight and I say I, but anybody that answers the phone here is, is perfectly capable. Uh, Jen, my wife, Erica, our admin is, has been awesome. Matt, my, my tech uh, is very good. But uh, if we know the rider's weight, what machine they're on and what skid generation they're on, because the RTX and the LTX uh, uh, Procross chassis from Arctic Cat and uh, Yamaha will take different springs. The, the Skidoo uh, R-Motion, R-Motion X take very different springs. Um, so once we know the, 
the chassis it's in, Renegade, MXZ, uh, you know, Assault, you know, whatever that chassis is, the length of the skid, the rider's weight, uh, and what kind of gear they carry, whether they two up at all or they carry a passenger or fuel caddy, then we can we can make a great recommendation and guide them on how to set that machine up remotely. Question for you, John. Nice. These new smart shocks coming out, if you can explain to actually even myself and, and everyone in the chat watching the show, how does that work? Like, is that going to help a lot of tunability or are you still going to be able to obviously have to fine tune that system? I would imagine you would, right? Well, yeah, you you would. What what the Smart Shock platform is doing is it's it's looking after the damping. You know, the uh, a shock is the damper inside with a spring over top. To be to be accurate, and uh, we find massive improvements in making sure the springs are correct. You know, I I could say we spend 60, 70 percent of our day working with customers doing that, and I've I have yet to roll a, a mock a new mock set or a, uh, a renegade with a smart shocks platform in the shop. I've got my dealer anxiously looking at, looking for one for me, but we're keen to see what uh, BRP put on it for torsion springs and ski springs okay. because uh, man, the, I love the Skidoo product, but sometimes there are ways away from the bullseye in terms of, of getting the springs in there to best suit what the rider's trying to accomplish. Um, so we, I, kind of hesitantly think that that's going to continue. I expect we can make a big gain in the customer's happiness with the machine by getting the right springs in it. Right, right. But, but to segue back to your question, the smart shocks, the ECU in the, in the snowmobile is, is reading several parameters, uh, you know, everything from throttle position, engine speed, RPM. Um, and then they're, they're trying to best read the terrain, and I don't know how successful uh, Skidoo has. Um, my 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 history is with superbike racing, where we have telemetry data on the front and rear suspension, and the and the computer can watch how quickly the forks and the shock are moving, mm -hmm. and with a with a kind of a fairly straightforward matrix of operations, they can hypothesize and estimate you know what they should do with the damping. Like if the, if the shocks all suddenly open right up, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that sleds in the air, right? right. And they can turn the damping up to maximum anticipating that gravity is going to bring that thing back down. Yeah. Um, and then if the suspension is moving very gently, it says, Hey, you're in Quebec and we're going <laughs> to, we're going to open the compression and rebound to give you tremendous comfort but then as soon as they see that uh, that one shock start to react quickly, they can anticipate a bump coming and adjust the damping to to prevent bottoming basically is the is a lot of the theory, um, as well as as left to right, uh, you know, transfer and squat and pitch and roll. They'll try to limit that with the smart shock technology. And so I, I hope that it, it, it goes well for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I anticipate helping a little bit in terms of spring support. Um, and then I, my fingers are crossed that, you know, historically ice and electrical wiring has not been kind to each other. So um, yeah. I don't, I don't know in a year or in two years, uh, Yamaha struggled a little bit with the sidewinder with the smart shocks. Uh, a lot of the dealers around the area here had a few of them in, uh, in service bays uh, for parts of last winter with, with those things locked up solid when they, when they failed. So I hope uh, that it, it works. Yeah. That was my question with the, the Articat and Yamaha system. It, it's IACT, I believe, right? Interactive. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, IACT. Yeah. 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 So it's similar to the BRP one. This is the BRP yeah. one's just a little bit more advanced. I would think, right? Yeah. This, the, the BRP one is closed loop. It's, yeah. it's watching the shocks and mm -hmm. changing them where the, uh, the IACT Fox technology is, uh, it gives you beautiful rider control on the, on the, on the dashboard or on the on the handset to allow you to pick soft, medium, and firm. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just kind of lazy, lazy man's way of 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 adjusting the shocks from the from the handlebars, where the Skidoo system is actually uh, constantly monitoring it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Hey, we got a house cleaning to do, Rich, and I love this one. I, I should yeah. almost get you to read it. <laughs> How can Gary put a video of Rich outdoors, but Rich can't? <laughs> Still like Dustin you, Rich. Ingram, like five. Beautiful pillars. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How can Gary put a video of Rich outdoors, but Rich can't still laugh out loud? Still like a Rich, but I'd like to see that beautiful Polaris. Yeah, well. <laughs> Gary we, and I, were we, it was, about that. I never did talk about people telling how much horrible luck I've had with that GoPro, but anyways, that's another story. Yeah, but, but we're yeah, we he didn't shoot any video that day. It ended up flying through my door and <laughs> landing on my couch. And and right? uh, but I tell you, man, like uh he's referring to a video I put up last night with the incident on it. <laughs> and uh and I like I, I cut a lot of that footage out. You can see how choppy it is, but I, I got to tell you, like to have you there that day was really important because I don't think it would have been as smoothly uh, dealt with as far as the handling goes as, you know, to help him feel better, you know, oh, yeah. as yeah. he's laying hey. on the ground and stuff. And, and there, there's one comment on the video is Gary, you were laughing too much at him, you know, and it, I'm not like we were laughing after like yeah. it was pretty serious when we when we pulled up and it was a yard sale on the trail <laughs> and uh and and once we helped him out and realized hey he's okay he's worried about his phone if it's broke and <laughs> uh and then you and i just just made light of it which was really good so oh, yeah. no and that's the thing and i and i alluded to it last year saying that people are going what's rich like you know in the chat after that and I'm like, he's super nice guy, man. Like he's genuinely a nice guy. And it's like, and that's what I was referring to. So people, people see it on the video now. It's, it was awesome. Yeah. So thank the you. The only thing is I got to apologize. I, I, I did drop the F-bomb a little bit too much because some, you, you forget that you're recording. And after I watched yeah. it, I thought, oh my Lord. It's like, because <laughs> when I'm yeah, recording, yeah. I'm, I'm obviously sensible to it. Right. And I'm sensitive that I'm not dropped. But anyways. Yeah. yeah. But, but you don't realize when. Like I, when I record and not, right? Like that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I'm not very selective. So, and I could have cut it out, but it made for a better video. I think <laughs> that's so what Je I cut a lot. he goes, no, that's, that's good. You got to leave it like that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, I left a lot of it in. So yeah. it's uh, <laughs> yeah. for a reason, oh, okay. but I cut a lot of it out too. So yeah, I tend to take mine out more this year. Yeah. I, oh, absolutely. And we'll get you out there with Corey and stuff. Oh, and, yeah, for sure. And it'll yeah. be a blast. So, yeah. yeah but thank times. you very much, Dustin. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's good. Thank that's, you. that's our, that's our fans, John. That's our <laughs> fans. Yeah. It's cool. I'm just, uh, my first time on the show and, and uh, Gary gave me the walkthrough on how it's working. And it's, uh, it's so cool to see everybody out there and chiming in and chatting. It's, uh, it gives us that sledder community before we get a chance to get out on the snow. Yeah, it's yeah, a good group. yeah, it's it, it is. It's a really good group, and it's it shows you how small a world the snowmobile world is. When um, there's actually another one here that said that they he you actually did his Arctic Cat. Um, can't remember where it is. I love Papa Watts's comment though. Though he went from 195 pounds to 170 pounds, the best snowmobile mod this season. <laughs> oh greg seaman he said hey john great job on my lt a couple of years back thanks will you be at sledorama in november uh yeah apparently it's that show is a go uh gary you can probably confirm that eh yeah i haven't heard anything that's canceled yet so and it's outdoors so yeah, i'm pretty cash sure my check so yeah good good <laughs> so what hey, shows this good. guys uh, in Ram Peterborough. And Peterborough. Oh, the one in Peterborough. I love that one. I went. Yeah, I actually, yeah. Yeah, the wife and I went to yeah. that one last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we uh, we've been going to Sledorama and the uh, Big Toronto Show for years and years and years. And Sledorama is kind of fun and cool because it 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 jams it into one day, and a lot of the key core vendors are there, and the the customers are there, and and uh, you know the the cost to attend the show is a fraction. You can sleep at home, and you're not. Uh, you don't have the big bar bills. I mean, the hotel bills and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a nice, uh, it's a really nice grassroots show. Yeah. And it's November 21st is the date, correct, John? I believe so. Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah, somewhere it like November, Peterborough, yeah. Ontario, yeah. Sledorama 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Gary, are you going to go? We, I'll make sure we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Nice thing. Uh, Corey and I talked about it too. So we might do right a, a road You guys trip can there, come to my booth and sign autographs. <laughs> we might. Yeah, hand up. You, you might not want us there. <laughs> Wasn't he talking about this would be? What would you say? This might be the nail in your coffin, John, or something before we started. Right. 
I, I don't think I use those words. Yeah. Yeah. I think a career ending actually. Was. Career ending was the word. That's yeah. right. So uh, sometime is now Greg Eastman. He says, uh, well, it should be great being set up by John and Elka being one of the best shock packages. The big Thundercat should handle and ride amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah he's awesome. looking forward to it. I talk to him all the time and he's so looking forward to it. And he was happy that you were coming on too. So he's like, right on. Yeah. This will be good. 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 Well, well, he knows well. everybody though. I was really surprised that I, when I got an email from him being stateside. I'm thinking, right on. But I'm thinking, yeah. it's Greg. He knows. He knows everybody. Yeah. You know. Yeah, he does. So. He does. So a listen, question. For, uh, yep. Go ahead. Question for you, John. Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong. You have different stages of shock packages you offer, right? Is that right? Uh yeah. The where the word stage comes from is, okay. is 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 we borrow that from Elka. They have stage two, three, four, and five in terms of their shocks, and uh, um, so the it, to be clear, all their shocks are very high quality. There's either you're not you're not buying a lower quality shock with a stage two versus a stage four. It's it's the amount of adjustability. We want to make sure we pick a shock that best fits your budget and your expectations. Um, you know, if, and we have this conversation with riders all the time, if they said, Hey, uh, I kind of got two grand to spend, you know, why don't I get this, this entry level kit? And we might kind of talk to the rider and say, hey, why don't we just do the front? Are you keeping the sled? Oh yeah, I'm keeping it for five years. Well, let's do the front this year and we'll do the back next year. And then we can, we can stay on to a little bit higher caliber in terms of adjustability that we think will match your expectations better. Mm -hmm. So the stage two is a rebound only straight, straight shock, no, no piggyback. Uh, and then the stage three has piggyback reservoir with compression on the top. And then the stage four returns rebound on it. So it has compression and rebound. And that's probably one of our most popular shocks. And then the stage five is, is uh, I don't want to say hardcore, but, but it has high and low speed compression and rebound. So okay. it's probably the most loaded shock uh, on the market in terms of complete adjustability. You have to go back to a Pro 40 race shock from, from KYB to get that kind of uh, adjustability from a few years ago. Um, it is a beautiful shock absorber and it is not hard to understand. My wife has completely got it figured out. She'll pull over and she goes, I'm just adding two clicks of high speed comp. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. And I, That's I, say, awesome. I say, why, why high speed, and not low speed? Well, it's the small bump. I'm taking the edge off the bumps. I like how it squats when I grab the brakes, but you know, look at my O-ring. It's not on bottom. And I, I start laughing. And That's awesome. funny. Is yeah, she like the know. princess in the pea or whatever that's the children's story is where the, the little pea under the mattresses and she felt it the whole oh, way up? Oh my God. I, I know she's not watching because she's inside watching drag race or something, but, but uh, <laughs> well, that's on, uh, we got to end the show. <laughs> okay, we recorded it. So that's awesome. But um, you know, years ago with our pro action Yamaha's, uh, we got her on to adjust in the limiter strap. And so she was up, down, up, down all the time. When the temperature changed, she'd pull the strap up a little bit and uh, put a little bit more weight on the skis. Um, so, yeah, she's – I was talking to, to uh, Mike, a buddy of mine that picked up his XCR uh, today, and uh, I said to him, I said, yeah, she's she's crazy. She uh, um, She's so in tune with what's going on that I've created an animal – and you can tell when she takes her helmet off that, that it's not perfect because, you know, I find some guys will just, they'll ride anything and put a smile on their face. But when her sled's not perfect, I know about it. So um, we sometimes just have to have a chat at the side of the trail about what possibly could be going on. Why is your sled darting? And, uh, and then we, we make an adjustment and then she's happy again. So she wears her emotions on her sleeve, but that helps us really make, make sure that we never uh, oversee a problem. We get it fixed right away. That's, That's awesome. Um, yeah. I, I put a question up on the screen and I think it's a great one. Kirk Hastings yeah. asked, he said, well, question for John, KYB, Fox, Walker, Evans, Elka. What's the difference for the consumer? <laughs> uh, so is Kirk, I don't see his name there. Is he watching? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Kirk oh, right on. Hi, Kirk. Kirk Kirk's, yeah. Kirk's Kirk Hastings. Do you know that guy? Yeah. He's a great friend of mine. We've stayed at his place in Newfoundland. Uh, Kirk and Penny own uh, Snow Escapes, uh, um, uh, a 
touring company that's out of uh, out of uh, Meadows near nice. Cornerbrook in in nice. Newfoundland. And if you ever get a chance to go out and see them after COVID, uh, do it. They've they've got a wonderful program out there in Newfoundland. So, uh, no, um, it's not wonderful. It's best kind. Oh uh, yes, <laughs> best kind. What are you at there, buddy? You should have told me. <laughs> Um, okay, so a, a quick rundown is we find all the manufacturers have got slightly different nuances in the way they design the shock, and a lot of it is ideas. Um, Walker Evans has their needle system, and uh, what it is is it's a, it's a needle pointing down in the head of the shock, and when the piston comes up on it and approaches that needle as it nears bottom, uh, the piston comes up, approaches on the needle, and the damping goes up dramatically. So that's their little uh, gimmick gizmo that works really well um, in terms of a shock. It, it makes the, whenever we can keep a shock from bottoming yet keep it soft and compliant, the sh the window we say the window of operation is very big for that shock. So that gimmick works good with the Walker Evans and gives them a tremendously soft shock that doesn't bottom but that needle goes exactly where we put a rebound system so whenever you see a walker evans needle shock it will not have rebound mm -hmm. so uh that that is uh and rebound to me is a deal breaker one once you know it and understand it and accept it it's like oh yeah i gotta have that you know uh, there's so many times i could have fixed a problem with a rebound adjuster either the bump frequency in the trail is very high and the ski is not getting back down to the ground quick enough and it's packing up, that's a rebound deal. So, so that's, that's kind of Walker Evans. Uh, KYB have been making brilliant shocks for years and years and years. They're a very, very good shock. Uh, we find that um, uh, the manufacturers that use KYB are probably putting them under some, um, some pressure to keep the cost of the shock down. Uh, so that the end use, the end snowmobile is not upwards of thirty thousand dollars as it could be. <laughs> so we 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 find that uh, each year, uh, one of the manufacturers, not mentioning any names, um, slowly uh, will take another adjuster off the shock. And last year uh, in twenty one, it was Rebound. The their their premium XRS package lost Rebound adjustment on the Pro thirty six skis ski shocks. So that's kind of an unfortunate decision that's not the fault KYB. I think it just uh, uh, in the marketing decisions to, to watch the ceiling and the margin on the snowmobile, they lose some of that adjustability. Um, but a very good shock. Um, uh, Fox, Fox for years had uh, gained tremendous market share with the float shock absorber, which is not one of my favorite products. Uh, it has very high uh, breakaway friction, and uh, we deep from our motocross and enduro cross background. There, uh, a lot of these motorcycles have air forks, and we find that the uh, they are very, very, very progressive. So uh, they'll start off with a certain spring rate, equivalent spring rate, and as the shock or the fork gets near bottom, the air pressure rise is so exponential that the effect of spring rate is explosive, and uh, the, the fork or shock just wants to explode back open again. And those those of you that have tried to play around with getting a float set up properly, uh, you know, they made evol chambers on evol chambers and small jets to try to, to delay the inevitable rise in, in air pressure. But you end up trying to, to get that air pressure low enough to get the ride height down and not make the shock stiff but uh, without bottoming. So it's, it's kind of all, and then the temperature will throw those things out um, and then they're prone to sticky. You know, they've got a lot of, of, of surface area, the Fox floats do. Um, a typical shock uh, about the size of a, your wedding ring um, that is the seal and the wiper on the shaft that looks after a lot of the, the friction of the damper. And on a float, it's more like four bands the size of a wristwatch. So uh, I've I've done videos where I'm I'm pushing on the front of a Viper, and the bumper is bending before the shocks move. Oh, um, so that's that equivalent equivalates to a very very rough ride. When in terms of you think how big of a bump do you have to hit mm -hmm. to actually move that shock absorber? 
Um, and that circles us back to Elka, which is probably our favorite chalk absorber. Uh, they're made here in Canada. They're an excellent product. Um, we have a great relationship with their engineering department. I can pick up the phone or my cell phone and, and have custom parts made in a few days uh, to test. And, and they work very closely with us. We have a great relationship with them. Uh, last year, we took over the design here at Accelerated Technologies for Elka's uh, Renegade and MXZ platform product. We, we design their shocks here in-house uh, and send them the bill of materials. And we have our own custom shock that churns out of there uh, and comes out. So um, unfortunately, the COVID has hit them pretty hard in terms of getting staff and materials. And, and so their lead time is pretty big right now. If you were to pick up the phone, you'd find that you're three months plus right now, if you were to place an order for a snowmobile shock. Ooh. And uh, so we kind of saw that writing on the wall and uh, ordered, we ordered almost 200 shock absorbers um, in August for our snowmobile customers, just so when they right call now. us, Right around, right around now, you know, when the leaves are changing color and the nights are getting cool and people start to remember they have $15,000 snowmobiles. Yeah. Um, they, when they start calling us now for shock packages and shocks, we will we'll have inventory very shortly. So we're trying to help Elka help themselves there a bit. But but uh, I, I hope, Kirk, that uh, kind of runs down the, the, the major key players and some of their um, pros and cons that we find. Uh, they're just like cars mm -hmm. nowadays. They're all good. It's just kind of which one best suits mm -hmm. you. But uh, we do find um, there's some engineering challenges with some of them that, uh, and our favorite has been Alka for going on 10 years now. Yeah. A question for you too, John. I, I see a lot of people that ride sleds that'll get up to be like three or four years old and they, and they start saying, oh, this thing's riding like crap and handles like that. It, it, don't the shocks start dissipating slowly but surely and you don't notice it until all of a sudden you get your shocks rebuilt or they come see you and they get a cut and then all of a sudden it's like oh my god this sled rides amazing like it used to yeah that's a that's such a key point rich we've we've we find that you know a couple things are going on is this the shock deteriorates probably one or two percent every time you ride it and uh even the nitrogen you know we we check nitrogen we had a 21 uh, Renegade in here last week and it had like 300 kilometers on it and the guy wanted to get our dual rate spring package for the front torsion springs for the back and then we were doing a revalve on the rear shock um, uh, but we checked all the dampers when we had them off to put our spring set on and they had all lost um, probably 100 psi nitrogen from the factory so uh, even if this, even if you took the sled out of the dealership floor and put it on a shelf and didn't use it for two years, the shocks unfortunately have deteriorated. Um, we see at the manufacturing level, uh, a lot of seal heads and nitrogen caps put in dry. You know, we find uh, a lot of manufacturers don't waste money on grease and uh, an O-ring, you know, an, a simple O-ring on a nitrogen cap if it was greased when it was inserted into the bore of the reservoir, doesn't roll the O-ring when you install it. And uh, so it helps the O-ring retain its integrity. And the grease also tends to fill in a lot of the, um, the slight imperfections in the body. So after we get a shock that's sometimes five, 600 kilometers, we get the break-in oil out, all the contamination from break-in out of it. Um, change the oil, put in a high quality synthetic oil, grease everything. It'll last a lot longer than it would have just from right off the, the showroom floor. So to, to circle back to your point that, yeah, they, they, they deteriorate so slowly. You don't really notice it. You just mm -hmm. kind of may hop on your buddy's machine. And, oh, I got to get a new sled. Yours rides right. awesome. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and, and really the shocks have got, you know, 15% of their oil left in them and none of their nitrogen left in them. And they're smashing off the scissor stops on top and the bump stops on bottom. And uh, yeah, if we can get in there and service the shocks, um, you know, we've sold people $4,000 shock packages and they shake my hand and said, man, you saved me from buying a $20,000 snowmobile. 
That's that's so, where I was going to get to next too. Right? Yeah, if, if we can, that's you know, truth. spend that money wisely, yeah. let's yeah. do it. So yeah. Now, do you do you rebuild other manufacturer shocks, John, or no? You 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 prefer to work on your own stuff, right? I, I would imagine. I mean, it's well, I, I could spin this laptop around, and there's our outgoing shelf right there. Is okay. It's uh, KYB, Walker, Evans, HPG, okay, good. So you KYB, do, okay. Showa, uh, Olin's. Yeah, we okay. we service everything. Oh, everything. awesome. Good to know. That's good so to know. people can send the, can just box up their shocks, send them India. You'll take care of them, rebuild them, and send them back. And it, what's the kind oh. of a turnaround time for something like that right now? Right now, we're at one week. Um, Jeez. Oh, wow. We've, That's we've fast. amazing. Yeah, sometimes we've been up as high as five, six weeks, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but we've got pretty good staff right now. We've got some good, good, good guys and girls in here that are doing an awesome job, and they're cracking the whip on me. They don't let me away with anything, so uh, <laughs> I'm tied to my bench here most days. And and so yeah, we're uh, Matt, my technician is uh, he's he's awesome at uh, churning out shocks, and and we try to on go. Our, our girls are working on our inventory in terms of seals. We've got some great suppliers behind us, keeping us uh, keeping us stocked up, and uh, and so yeah, that we have a form on our website, a work request form. So we get shocks in from all over the country and and uh, and all over North America. Not not as much snowmobile stuff coming up from the U.S. Some of our revalve customers are from the U.S., but in reality, there's there's got to be some capable people. I know there's some capable people in the U S that are doing what we do. Uh, so they really don't have to ship across the border for just a service okay. that our U S customers are coming to us for that next level improvement. Right. Right. Okay. Nice. nice. That's good to uh, know. That, uh, that, uh, that, that sled right behind you, there, the yellow one, that's a yeah. 2018.5 600 R. Uh, it is. It's uh it's the, that's, it's that's not, you, so, so you pulled that out for me. That's the one you're giving to me. Is it? I did get yes, part of our draw. Gary, did I knock over that's that? That's right. That's my dream sled right there. I want one. <laughs> well, did, isn't, that what, isn't that what you almost bought off of Neil? Uh, wasn't it an M? No, his, well, it was a 600, but it wasn't the original 600 R like that one has the, well, stock it has the XRS suspension on it. Yes, and, it's got uh, the tunnel adjust and the reinforced yeah. uh, running in, board. In, in truth, Neil's was better because it had your shocks on it, and it was newer, right? Like, but yeah. it's I not always, a twenty eighteen point five. It's it's not like that's a that's like the anniversary sleds. But yeah. now that I don't have an an anniversary edition sled for whatever reason, <laughs> yeah, you gotta grab that. Eh? You almost have, have a to, divorce version sled. So that's right. So <laughs> I think I'll be happy on the eight fifty. Oh, you're going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you will. Here's a question from some time is now. Question for John. I see Elka recommends their propriety oil for their shocks when getting rebuilt. Is that a good practice when getting them rebuilt? I would imagine. It is, you know, in terms of warranty support, um, you know, they, I think what they're being cautious of is, is people getting carried away and pouring in something that they don't have any history with. Uh, the shocks are very sensitive to viscosity, basically. Okay. Um, if most shocks are engineered and valved around a two and a half weight uh, shock oil, and uh, if you just reach off your shelf and, and take a five or a seven and a half weight oil that you had kicking around, um, it's going to dramatically make that shock stiffer in, uh, in terms of compression and slower in terms of rebound, and it might work terribly. So um, I think what they're trying to do is make sure that there's some consistency in the performance. Um, you know, we could have, we could talk for two hours about running uh, XPS oil in a Skidoo engine, you know, and, and what is the, yes, they've tested it and yes, they've developed it to, to death and they stand behind their product. Is it the best oil out there? Uh, I'm not sure. I know there's a bunch of high end oil companies that make some great oil. Um, so I, I think, you know, I think the truth is, is in there somewhere is that they want to see consistency in their outcome. Yeah. 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 Well, that's good. Uh, it's uh, sled addicts. Uh, Mike asked a question. He said, if, uh, of all the manufacturer stock shocks, what are your favorites? Uh, that's a great question. The, the Walker Evans on the Polaris are very good shocks. Um, 
you know the ones uh, the uh, velocity two mm -hmm. uh, two two inch on the XCR yeah. is a nice shock absorber, a large large diameter shaft which uh, pumps a lot of oil, so it's easier to damp. Uh, is a very good shock on a stock snowmobile. Um, yeah, there none of them really have compression and rebound any longer that that I'm aware of. Some of the um, sidewinders might have the Fox QS three R uh, shock, which is a the the functionality of the shock is very good. I just don't agree with the three the three compression settings. Number one is way too soft. Number two is too soft, and number three is good for Tucker Hibbert face uh, over shooting a triple kind of thing. <laughs> um, but we've we came up with a with a with a fix for that, and uh, we we just drill out new new orifice diameters to something we know works better. So um, yeah, I think uh, you know they're all pretty pretty good. They're just slightly different ways in terms of execution, but uh, the, one of the issues with the Walker Evans we find is that they're kind of sticky. Um, they use a, a stainless steel shaft. Mm -hmm. And the surface finish is not awesome. It's really good, but it's not awesome. So every Walker Evans that comes in this building uh, comes apart and goes into the lathe room and we polish that shaft and, uh, and put in our grease that we know works really well. And then, man, the shock works beautiful after that. So they all, they all have little, uh, little issues, but, uh, but yeah, they're all pretty good, you know, and, and, some of the packages, some of the base model packages uh, where you're saving a bunch of money at the dealership, it's you're getting entry level dampers for sure. Yeah. But that's kind of one of the things that we try to educate our customers with is, you know, we get XRSs in here by the dozen every week. And, uh, you know, sometimes the answer is, hey, buy an X package, save two grand, and let's talk about a shock package that'll leapfrog that package you know, that's really going to make you happy. So there you uh, go. yeah, there's, yeah, nice, uh, nice. we enjoy that relationship with a lot of our returning customers and, and we're so lucky we've got amazing customers and, and I want to shout out to everyone that's, that's watching, that's been in here. Thank you very much. But, but uh, we have, I think we've got 15 appointments now from returning customers that don't have their sled yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're like pushing it back. Yeah, they're like, yeah. when I get my sled, uh, I want to spot. I want to bring it in and and make sure you set it up. And so does a million other people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think of the new Lynx shock package and the PPS uh, rear suspension? Um, what do you have for advice? Because I know a few guys on on our group have ordered the Lynx, and uh, and are probably looking forward to seeing what they can do with it. The Lynx system is probably one of the best systems uh in the world in a snowmobile in my in my impression from what i've what i've seen and what i've heard nice. um it's uh the simplicity and uh the lack of friction the way it executes uh seems to be very very good um uh liam a buddy of mine owns gateway local snowmobile dealer that we're pretty tight with uh has has ridden it and says you you got to have the hammer down to make that thing work. Uh, you got to ride it hard. If you're just, you know, looking at the cottages, enjoying the scenery, it is a stiff stiff snowmobile. But when the cards are down, and and so is the throttle, uh, it is in a supremely capable snowmobile. So um, yeah, we're uh, I got a phone call today that we're getting one in in a couple of weeks to get set up uh, nice. from a, from a, one of our great returning customers in Harcourt. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it, uh, I think it's a, a really good snowmobile. It's got its limitations. It's definitely aimed at, at big bump off trail crowd. Um, so th if that's not your cup of tea, you know, think twice about buying one, um, you know, but that goes for XRS and XCR owners as well, you know, making sure you bought the right snowmobile. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I know it's, and is there anything you can do like, like I rode, I rode it in the spring and a, a fun sled, but it was really light in the front end. And we actually adjusted the shock to take some roll out in the turns and stuff. But I found you couldn't be on the throttle at all. Is there anything you can do with, with the limiter strap on that thing that can, 
can still give you that fun factor with the, with the wind, but so go back to the the planted corner to corner trail action. A hundred percent, and that's what we do every day here. Is we try to interview the rider, the owner of the machine, and 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 suggest some changes to it. Um, the limiter strap uh, is definitely a go-to. Um, it has its pros and cons for sure. Uh, but um, one of the big, big, big things that we find constantly in here is the imbalance between the center shock absorber and the rear uh, shock in a, in these snowmobiles. Um, and if you, if you lift a sled up in a dealership and set it down, the center of that snowmobile touches first. Um, and then it builds pressure, builds spring support on that center shock absorber. And then the skis will touch down and the, uh, and the back of the skid will touch down. So we've, we've uh, invested in four point um, uh, inner comp scales like car racers use to monitor this stuff. And we find that there's a tremendously high amount of weight supported by the middle of the snowmobile. And snowmobiles are unique in that. They're the only power sport vehicle that has a, a fulcrum in it, has a center in it. And it causes problems constantly. And one of them is what you just explained. You look at the throttle and the thing pitches back and unweights the skis. And how do you finish the corner? You know, you're you're trying to either tip it over and get it on one ski to bite, or you got to let go with the throttle. And who likes doing that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so part of it is getting the right torsion springs in the machine, in the back of the machine. And uh, some of the Lynx designs these coil over rear shock absorber. So it's, it's getting the rear spring set properly and getting the light, the center spring set properly. Get it out of the way. We say lighten it up. Um, get that, get the weight off of the middle of the machine when you go to throttle. It's got to stay on the skis if you want to finish corners. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And what would you do in a case like that? Is there aftermarket Elkas for that, that machine being at such a big bore or, or would it, is it just strictly a rebuild situation? Well, it's, it's kind of neither right now. Um, you know, that machine is so new that there's no way Elka's got fitment covered. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my situation, I can, I can go to Elka and say, Hey, you know, I think this is going to be a big seller. Uh, I can get one here in the shop let me measure it up and we'll go to market and we'll design up a shock package for it. Um, but I don't right now, I don't know that those dampers are low quality dampers. I, I think they're high quality units. So we have to consider that when I, when I, you know, chat with Elka and say, Hey, there's, is there a market here or not? And then I kind of circle back and say, okay, how do we fix that problem? And a lot of times we bring it in here. we, excuse me, we put the rider on it, we check the rear sag, you know, you'll hear us talk about that in every visit with every customer. We'll see what that sag is. We'll put it on the scale and we'll say, oh my God, it's, you know, there's 80% of the rear of the snowmobiles on the center shock and 20 is on the rear. You know, what's going on with that? So then we take the shocks out and we measure the spring rates and we, we will often come up with a, a spring package that, that uh, better fits what we're trying to do with that snowmobile. And if, you know, there's there's going to be a market for guys that have bought Lynx snowmobiles that want to trail ride them, you know, and and uh, I don't think that's their their uh, their MO. I don't think that's their focus when they were designing that Lynx, you know, in, in Europe was they don't have our groom trail system. That's right. But if we take the ownership and the and the decision to say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to take a monster truck and go NASCAR racing with it. <laughs> uh, we have to open our wallets up and make that happen. So, That's a good point. Um, but we we can do that. You know, I'm I'm curious to see uh, uh, that first links in here and measure it up. And and uh, often we will we'll spend a few days if the customer can leave the sled with us for a few days. We'll measure the heck out of it and uh, and come up with some product or some some solutions would be a better word to to make that thing work better. And a lot of times the problem is the, is the middle shock absorber. Who is yeah, the shock nice. shock manufacturer for that? I imagine it's KYB. It's it KYB. is KYB. Yeah. It is. I, I, okay. I imagine yeah, it is. Okay. Um, yeah, they yeah. were, they were pretty, uh, uh, the guys at PPS were, were kind of tight with Olin's at one point in time, but, mm -hmm. but I don't know. 
you know, how friendly Olin's is to OEM applications. They've, they've done some, we've seen Olin's get into bed Yamaha. In, Omaha in yeah. the past on some of their, uh, on some of their uh, higher end apex packages uh, back in the day, but um, but it's not very common. Yeah, yeah. they're they're no, shocks. I had them on my my SRX. They were amazing. The Olins, they were a yeah. good shock. Yeah, they're a very very high quality shock absorber. Yeah. Yeah. We sell a ton of them here for in the summer. Yeah, uh, and they use them on their motorcycles too a lot. Yamaha, right? Uh, yeah. on, on some of them, like on. Yeah. Yeah. On the R1M and uh, yeah. and some of their higher caliber uh, anniversary edition stuff, they will, yeah. At one point in time, Yamaha owned 51% of Olin's. Of Olin's, that's what I, that's and, what I thought. And, wow. uh, so they enjoy a very good relationship at the MotoGP level. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it, uh, they're, they're, they're still very tight, uh, Yamaha and, and Olin's. Yeah. Yeah. Very on. Yeah, that's awesome. Listen, we got to get to the fan photos. And then we'll get back to you, John. All right. Sure. This isn't, about, this isn't, all, this isn't <laughs> all about you. It's, a, beer, it's about so. our fans. You know, yeah. it's about yeah. our fans. Yeah. So, but uh, I, uh, you want to see some fan photos, John? 100%. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm I, waiting let, to see let, this tech vest. <laughs> Gary's oh, been teasing yeah. me all day. <laughs> I heard about that. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So just hold on a second here. And, uh, and we'll get going, but I just want to say I would just want to say something that that this the uh, fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction. So they have an exclusive offer right now for snowmobile session fans only, and it's a free install tools with the purchase of a stud kit. You add the stud kit to your cart with with your studs and your backers, and if you use a coupon code code Snow S N O W at checkout, you'll get the toolkit taken off the uh the price there and it's at fasttrack.co f-a-s-t-t-r-a-c.co make sure you check them out online so i've actually yeah my studs arrived today actually and oh, nice. uh I, I got i got rich's backers here so <laughs> for but, my xcr um, i look yeah. good on my black xcr <laughs> but you know you look at this and i'm used to a woody's and here i'm trying to find the camera here and uh, it's quite a bit different. Like it's got a really thin uh, back plate on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, like you were saying last week, that buries down in the track nice. It's got a real nice sturdy material and it's nice and thick all the way through right up to the tip. I love it. It's a uh, thin head, no shoulder, he says. He says it allows it to pull flush in the track and it protects the running gear. The backer design is easier on the track than aluminum. It's lighter and allows you to run a shorter nut, saving lots of weight. The studs are stainless steel and heat treated to a grade eight bolt for strength. And uh, the, the kits rust free if you upgrade to the stainless steel or aluminum nut. The backers are polymer. They're perfected with a proprietary blend over 20 years ago. And nice. uh, each and he comes with templates and the whole shebang. So that's pretty cool. So let's get right on into the fan photos and uh, and away we go. All right, so here I gotta get up to the the big screen. Dave here. Nerona back, huh? <laughs> yeah, Dave Nerona. He's a. Uh, we had some pictures come in late last at the end of the uh, of the last episode, so I, I'm putting these on here today too. So nice. we got it here, but uh, yeah, Dave Nerona sent me in a few pictures. Just gotta see how to advance this here, if I can. Look at oh, that wow. shot nice. in the sunset. You know, my mm -hmm. microphone floating there. Let me move that out of the way. <laughs> Can you still hear me now? Yeah, you, yeah, you sound like you're in a tin can, but that's okay, buddy. It's good. Just less, it's better. <laughs> yes, that's right. So, I love it. The, the, uh, the next shot is Dave Nerona to a T, man. If you're oh, yeah. riding, you got to do this. <laughs> Isn't that wild? That's awesome. That's, that's my Sharona right there, I'm telling you. That's hilarious. <laughs> There's his feet kicking her back. You know, love it. Isn't that awesome? Like that is the way to do it. Yeah, that would be wild. Go for a ride. I would have sit in the hot spring. I would have loved to known where that was. So, but uh, anyway, is Olive Garden Gnome in the chat? He sent me this. He sent me this. He said the That's team hilarious. at Tech Rider was was great to work with. So he said this is the front view and back view of his uh, 
his garden gnome. grateful dead inspired tech fest that's awesome and and uh he actually did something special on the inside Oh my God! We grew up this with that poster. Inside. That poster was on my wall. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, faucet. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh wait, he's no. He he says, he says, uh, he said this is actually the tug. <laughs> Hill, he said this is the tug hill version of the of the tech vest right there. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's one of a kind. <laughs> Tug Hill version of the tech vest right there. Oh, I heard you. He said the yeah. he said the poster was on the door of a refrigerator in my parents' basement throughout my childhood. When oh, you yeah. mentioned it during the show show or tour, I fell out of my chair laughing and the inspiration began. The outcome was an homage of the America's greatest exports, the Grateful Dead and Farrah Fawcett. Oh, Thanks yeah. for all the content and laughs, guys. I wish everyone has a safe and snow-filled season. Garden Gnome. Isn't that that's awesome. awesome? That's yeah, awesome. awesome. <laughs> Every kid in the I, 70s had that poster on their wall, man. <laughs> we had a dartboard in the garage, and that was hanging there. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. So John, game. Tech Rider was on the show last year, and he was talking about full-color sublimation and, and trying to explain it to people. I said, you can get pictures on there. Like, uh, can I get a picture of Fair Fawcett on there? And oh, yeah. this guy picked up and ran with it. So when I opened my email with the fan photos – I was laughing. I I I was that's just awesome. dying for this moment to show it. But that's awesome. That's... But I, I love that it's on the inside of the tech fest, not the outside. Right. <laughs> I would I would have put it on the back on the outside if it was oh, yeah. It. yeah. And watch people crash. That's right. That's awesome. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so many people riding by. Hey, I had that poster. <laughs> Isn't oh, that man, wild awesome. though? That is just that just is just that made my my whole day, man. It makes it all worthwhile, you know. See, tech fest, tech fest should work on a reversible tech fest. There you go. There you go. Right? Yeah, the, depending they, on the mood you're in, right? Yeah, they might. You're riding with the wife and kids. Or with the boys. <laughs> yeah. That's it. The boys' weekend. You, you flip it around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You That's get your awesome. favorite porn star on it. The, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> Oh, but uh, he says this is his 19 this is still from carl olive garden gnome in the chat if he's there olive garden. he said this awesome. is his 29 yeah 2019 renegade x 600r he said fingers crossed that the 2022 enduro he ordered shows up complete the front yeah. uh yeah so that's it he's uh he said this is um island pond vermont in 2019 and the next one is uh cooper harbor minnesota uh, in the UP and Eagle Harbor, Minnesota in the UP is the next pictures. Oh, I guess I didn't put them in. Oh, I guess that's those two pictures right there. Right Eagle there, Harbor's yeah. on the right. Yeah. yeah so nice. I nice. didn't put them in. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm just so taken aback by Farrah Fawcett. It's, uh, it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from our buddy Jumpman, Rich. Nice. This oh, is yeah, his new sled. Short. He's. Yeah, yeah. jump ship, jump man, jump ship. He came over to the good <laughs> side. Yeah, he said he's back. he's got a nice skidoo free ride. It's the 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 light blue and the lime green one, the famous color scheme. He said he's so excited to be back at it for another season of snowmobile sessions. He absolutely missed it and chatting with you all. We had a great summer, spent many hours on the boat fishing and enjoying the local lakes and rivers. It's time they all freeze up so we can get out riding. Wrap on. Well, I sold the 2018 player Switchback Assault and went over to ski -Doo. It's been many years since I've owned a do, but I'm certainly glad. Oh, where did he go? I'm certainly glad. Uh, certainly looking forward to. Ah, I'm way back here. Where is it here? <laughs> um. Anyway, he's certainly nice looking look. forward to the experience. That's what he says. The experience of the do. Here's a few shots of the day we picked up this beauty. More photos to come after I get all the stickers off and add my own touch. It's nice. a 2017 ski free Freeride 146. He found this sweet ride with only 1,300 kilometers on it. Cheers, oh, yeah, jump 2019, man. he bought a 2017. Nice. nice. Yeah. But That's the, a nice color. Uh, so he had a switchback assault, Rich. Like what? Uh, oh, the switchback. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, what would be the advantage of of going to the free ride? Is it more of a bump? 
a bump capable sled or or what? Well, that switchback had that weird suspension in the back, right? Right. Yeah, it did. It had the yeah, Polaris the big hat. frame. So I, I don't know yeah. how. The, hey, John, I I, I, I got to ask John that. We're still doing the photos about that. That rear suspension that Polaris had. I don't know. Was that a a failure in some sort of like visually? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I like I like to uh, no like all kidding aside. I, I looked at it and I'm sitting there, I was trying to figure. Out, obviously, there's engineers a hell of a lot smarter than I am, but I was trying to figure out how that worked. Well, if you if you, and I spent a lot of time, you know, with that skid and looking at that skid, and the design of it is pretty cool. You okay. know, it, the the way they've got their link arms mounted and then they put the shock above the tunnel. Uh, they were able to come away with a nice rising rate, and uh, and it was it was it had potential. It was very good, but mm -hmm. I think it was one of those things where you know did the negatives offset the positives or or vice versa? Right. Um, and there was so much loss of of uh, you know gear carrying capability on the top of the tunnel that mm -hmm. I don't think any any improvements in the design mixed with you know i don't um maybe not finished calibration because every year that thing got better and better and better okay. and, and then we started to hear rumblings of of polaris walking away from that design um but just you know listening to some of the customers say yeah you know i love the sled it was a fun sled one of the things that polaris has has been very successful at is is rider positioning on the running board and how that affects how the snowmobile works and you know if you lean forward on the handlebars and, and stay up fright front the skis will stay down and if you pull back like a motorcycle it'll lift up mm -hmm. so they've got a you know with an uncoupled design they can they can they can make that work if it's really if it's really set up properly but i kind of think some of the negatives just the um, it didn't, uh, it wasn't so much better than the R motion, um, that, uh, that it, uh, it, I don't know if it hit, hit the mark they were shooting for. Yeah. As I know, I got a couple of buddies that swear by it. They loved it. So, and actually and his storage, wasn't, his was the normal, the, re, the normal suspension. Uh, Gary. Yeah. And storage was the, was the tough part with that one, yeah. right? We, if yeah. you wanted to put anything on the back, you had that ugly rack that you had to, um, mount on top and yeah it was uh, that could be a deal breaker crazy. right right yeah, yeah for sure yeah for touring absolutely yeah. by today I, and that's the thing i was talking to rich in that video yesterday is that that my mxzx has zero storage on it my old one you know mm -hmm. so it is now, but jump man uh, sold stuff for that reason you know yeah 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 oh for sure um jump man we're gonna get you some new stickers to put on that bad boy and oh, yeah. a shameless plug but this is the shield saver that uh, that mm -hmm. i came up with last year and it's uh, it's vinyl with the snowmobile sessions logo on it and i've got the new updated logo on the new ones and yep. uh you just stick that down on the windshield you apply your permit to it and at the end of the season you just give it a little bit of heat and it peels right up no muss yep. no fuss and no res residue on the on the plastic so you yep. can stick it on your windshield on your vinyl on your on your body panels wherever you want to put that that permit and uh and it's clean 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 to remove it so if you want one just uh just shoot me a message to fan photo at mudbrats.com and and i'll set you up yeah they're good i had one last year it was awesome gary for taking yeah, it for off. sure you're, you're gonna get more this year too rich yeah i need to get another one because i got get one for the quebec permit too so <laughs> yeah well i should get the size of that and i can actually mm -hmm. size them properly for yeah it if you too, could do a dual so. that would be perfect yeah yeah Ghoulies needs one. There you go. So there's some more yeah. pictures, but I was, I, I'm glad I didn't read really jump man's comments and I was worried he put those stickers on. So I'm glad he didn't. <laughs> he, he restores my faith in humanity when I, right. when I see him say that he's going to take them off. So that is yeah, a wicked color sure. of his free ride though. That, that's a yeah, nice that, looking color combo. Yeah, that's yeah. famous. So, I mean, that's the, probably the most recognized free ride out there when you say. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Good Kane's Quest sled, that free ride. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Love them. So this is my buddy, Corey Brock. He says, hey, Gary, there's a few pics from that, that day that we went out on some local trails, and this was some drift branding shots you took on the rail bread between Orangeville and Shelburne. The last photo is a wicked awesome shot when I got to try out the 2022 Lynx from Energy Power Sports. 
Cheers. You can't wait to get out on the trails with the new Renegade XRS850 with the Smarty Shocks, he says. So, and there he's got the maple syrup going there. And uh, and he's also uh, sent me in some more pictures here. There's him on the link. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys made that one for it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, yeah, yeah, for sure. We we had uh, even Adam from BYR was there, that kind of thing. And there's the best shock upgrade you can get on an XRS. Wouldn't you say, John? <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, you know? My buddy, my buddy Brad, uh, uh, he he writes for, wrote for Snowgore magazine and now writes for Snowtech magazine in the U.S. And, uh, we lent him some Elka shocks to, um, to test. This was like three, four years ago. And he sends me them back again. And I open it up and it's some old, old steel body um, garbage shocks. And he put like the old antifreeze bottle duct tape to it to look like a reservoir. And then he hand wrote Elka on it just to see if I would I would just put him back in stock and thank him for returning his shots. <laughs> I'll have to that. send you that picture. It's pretty funny. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, this is from Carl, and he says, uh, "Gary, the new B2 LED headlights are working out well. This, these are my first aftermarket upgrade for the new 22 Renegade. Looks good, eh? Yeah. yeah. Right on. So, well, that's one More of the." Uh, the things that we caution a lot of our customers is when we lower the front of the XRS with our dual rate spring package, it lowers it about uh, two and a half inches. Oh. And one of the things we're shooting for is we try to get that A-arm angle down from like 11 degree stock to around zero. And uh, when we do that, and then we put the right torsion springs in the back, it lifts it up slightly. And I tell people, Hey, uh, adjust your headlights you know they're going to yeah, be right. good wrong. point good point and and the other thing is is the setup now is going to be so safe that you're going to be out riding your headlights at night if you ride at night so nice. uh, so yeah we advocate uh, good good led headlights so if anybody's got some good recommendations on some leds uh uh let us know <laughs> yes motojungle.ca <laughs> oh, you have perfect. to go there good one. Yeah. What kind of lumens are they, you know? Uh, 12,000 like lumens for the pair. Yeah. yeah. 6,000 each? Not, yeah, 6,000 each. They're not, it's not in the lumens per se. It's the way that they're engineered. And, and that because they're going in a stock reflector, you have to make sure that that LED chip is in the exact spot of where the halogen bulbs are, or else the reflector will just scatter the light. Where, where both okay. the two series I sell, which is the LED Eagle and the B2 series, they mm -hmm. actually have the engineered exact the same. And nice. either or, you can't go wrong. The difference to me is, is the warranty is better on the LED Eagle, but I've never had any issues with them. And But the, the B2 series is a cleaner install because it's got a new technology in the igniter and it's built right into the bulb. So you don't need nice. a, an inline box. So yeah. um if there ever is a question about the LED Eagles, it's because someone, Jesse, didn't tighten the the uh, the 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 rectifier on the line and it vibrated loose and and uh, came off. So you lose a headlight, but the, you just plug it back in and it works. But yeah, so <laughs> they make a huge Jesse, difference, though, Gary. I, I've ridden with oh, a couple totally. of guys that got the bulbs from you, and they make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, but, for yeah. sure. Actually, also, none's is in the house. Some. Yeah, I'll send What's you that? a link, John, yeah. after the show. So. Yeah, yeah, do that. I need to 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 get a few sets of them. Nuns is sure. in the no, I... in the chat here, and he's like, "Thanks, John, for looking after my brother Ross's new to him XCR, aka my old XCR, Nunzio." So. Oh yeah, we were nice. happy to, Nuns. Thank you yeah. very much. I'm yeah. glad he came in. Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's awesome. So he's a great guy too. Yeah, rode with him last year. <laughs> yeah, I rode his sled last year. It was awesome. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We both got to ride fun. It, Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. or was it Karen's sled? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll let him right, answer yeah. that one. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a beauty sled. I love the seating position, man. I, I really do. Uh, it's such a great yeah. sled. He's got an next year um, coming as well. So that'll be good. Guess yeah. where these pictures were taken, Rich? Ooh, geez. S Sweden. No way. Oh, yeah, they're these, starting these to get are, snow. 
I know. SG Flashy says, these are my photos of the first snow in Sweden. The last one isn't really of snow, but it's a, he let it slide because it's a beautiful morning of frost and fog in the distance with the mountains in the background. Hope you Canadians have snow in a few weeks too. Have a great day. Isn't Jesus, that awesome? That's a hell of a, that, that looks like snow on the roof, does it not? That's yeah, frost. it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I thought there was yeah. like I thought there was a bit I thought they got a dusting of snow on the roof and on the that's a yeah. hell of a frost. I, I believe right that's on. the snow. Um the other one's the frost picture, but um it's hard to see the mountains in any of them. But yeah, yeah. pretty pretty crazy. But yeah. yeah. But thanks for yeah. sending those in from Sweden. We'd love that. That's, that's awesome. That's man. awesome to show the reach yeah. of this this podcast. That's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's great. So this is uh this is from Soda Pop 20. He was in the nice. house earlier. Um, he said this is his, his daughter learning to lean forward to keep those skis down on the launch. He says, thanks, Gary and Rich. Soda Pop 20. Yeah. Look at, hey, Gary, you're always the one looking in the back. Look at those triple pipes in the back hanging on the wall. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. All polished yeah. up. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I wonder that's if that's awesome. it's a player's poster underneath. I wonder if that's from an indie. Yeah. XCR or something. Here. Yeah. yeah. Could be, yeah. yeah. Or uh, what do you call it? Um, the Storm. Yeah, the Storm yeah. Indy 650s yeah. or whatever they were. Yeah. Pretty sweet. So. What That's do you think, good. John? Is that too early to start them or what? No. <laughs> Never no. too early. I had my daughter in the tank bag on a motorcycle zipped right up. She was six months old and we were ripping around uh, on my street bike uh, on the grass and she was loving it. One of my favorite photos. That is awesome. I love that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 My son's 25, and we bought his uh, Mini Z when he was two. <laughs> when they cool. first came out in '98, they were brand new. They just came out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we yeah. got them. Yeah, it was great. And you, you still, you still have most, that. one most on it, right? I still have it. Well, I was—I told the story before, but there was one of there were they, uh, BRP made four of them to tour around before they launched them in '98. And the dealer I dealt with, Northland, he was pretty close with them. And and when he was selling them, I I snow checked uh, my ex-wife's '98 MX set, and he's like, "Do you want this?" And I'm like, "Absolutely." And it's serialized zero 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 one. Wow! And it yeah, was hand built. Awesome. It was before it went to mass production, so it was pretty cool. So and he still has it. So yeah, yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cool. Yeah. This is from Jimmy G. He said it's his nineteen ninety seven Summit five eighty three. Do you still put? Do you still work on shocks for the old sleds, or is it all new that you get involved in? Ah, uh, that's a great question. We we do a lot of refurb on on older stuff and COVID has seen a lot of this old iron coming out of the woodwork. And I noticed I was on a ride last winter and I pulled up at an intersection south of uh, Bancroft and there was like seven or eight sleds and they were all from the nineties. And That's it was awesome. so cool to see because, right. you know, a few years before that it was all, you rarely saw anything older than three or four years old. And you're like, where did that, where did those sleds go? And I think last year, you know, COVID helped them uh, come out of the woodwork and get back on the trails. Yeah. So we were, we had a bit of a renaissance happen where we were servicing older shock absorbers. But the reality is like that, the, the um, trying to point and look at my monitor at the same time, the rear <laughs> shock in that summit, I don't know if that thing's rebuildable. It's a pretty small, uh, small. Yeah, it does, eh? Small could be a steel damper with a crimped head on it. Yeah. Um, and you know, we run into the hey, can you service this shock? And it's and we say, Well, the shaft is all rusty, so we're gonna need to rechrome that, uh, service the shock, put all new seals in it. Just buy new. <laughs> and, yeah, now that the service is getting leaning on 250 bucks, yeah. and, and then they say, Oh, the sled's only worth 500 Why would I do that? And you know, we yeah. could uh, we could shoot holes in that argument all day long, but yeah. but uh, yeah. you know we 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 don't do a lot of really old stuff, but primarily it's because it they, it can't come apart. You know, some of those old dampers were were not pressure gas filled dampers; yeah. they were they were throwaway. Throwaways, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's funny you say that you see a lot of the old sleds coming back on the trails. Like this one was worth nine grand last year, last winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know it's crazy it's crazy uh, was, the prices of sleds holy crap it, it's funny i saw a post and you probably seen it too you, you both might have seen it. it was in uh 
the Facebook marketplace and it was a mini Z and the guy's like 15,000 or best offer. I'm not taking a penny less. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. The price is right. It's, I know, but it's funny. I, I think know. after all this is over, you're going to end up seeing a lot of good pricing. I think it's going to come back down, right? Correct. But who knows? Maybe there's a lot of enough people get back into the sport. It'll keep, keep raising it up. Right. So I think as long as the manufacturers keep cranking the prices up, the, the, yeah. the used market's going to go up to follow. Right. Well, the you know, Snowmobile Manufacturers Association said that it's overall prices, because they never, none of the manufacturers tell you what they sell. It kind of bothers me, but I, I guess I kind of get it. But uh, yeah, the, the Manufacturers Association for Snowmobiles were saying that sales increased by 26%. That's a, that's huge. Wow. Like for yeah, a market to increase crazy? by 26%, that is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is sure. that new, was that new sled sales? That was new sled sales. Now, the, but how much could it have gone up? Because they were selling everything that they could get. So exactly, uh, good point, John. Yeah, it may have doubled that had there been uh, demand, the supply, right? Yeah, it's true. That's a good point. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Odie, the sledding car guys in the house, Rich. Oh no way! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's his awesome. new sled? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's told anybody yet. Not yet, eh? No, Odie, nice. have you told anybody yet? Right. <laughs> no, he'll have to answer that. So this is from Rev, Rev Dude 800 He says, hey, guys, wanted to start by saying that I've been enjoying your videos. Just started watching your channel this fall. Found you through watching the Sled Addicts channel. The oh, podcasts are great to put on. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Well, wrenching mm -hmm. in the garage. Thought I would start with a token photo at the shelter. I know some yeah. guys that did some token at that shelter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shelter's famous, huh? This yep. is the Algonquin shelter in uh, yep. up in the middle of nowhere. I think it's awesome. Love it. So <laughs> <laughs> this is at Lake of Bays on the way there, oh, yeah. right? Maybe nice. we'll get rich token in that shelter this, nah. this winter. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding don't token yeah. and ride no, no you don't do that you there wait until after yeah so and then the rev dude 800 he says my local club trails in alliston and district snowmobile club that oh, sign nice looks viper. familiar i've been by there yeah i know it. yeah this is a nice viper isn't it that is a nice color and they're a good looking the, snowmobile yeah they are you've got the, the 900 ace turbo there in yeah. the lime green, love that. All four strokes, yeah. Yeah, great sleds well, in Quebec too. too, right? Yeah. yeah, that might be an eight fifty in the back there, Rich. I don't know if it's got the hood. Is it? I, I yeah, can see the see. detail more on mine, but yeah. you know, he oh, says he's look a at the ribbon laid down there. <laughs> yeah, he, isn't that he nice when you come around the corner? You see that? It's like oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like what I love what uh, what the um, uh, snow snow tracks guys said is that uh it's like stirring a jar of peanut butter you know when you first open it up first open it up nothing, and you're like it hasn't yeah, had the first yeah, one in. I, yeah that's the only thing i agree on <laughs> yeah. i'm only kidding they're great guys yeah. um yeah so he's he's a groomer operator for that that uh that club district nice. so where's where's he from like Gary, did he say did he say where he's from he's, well he said that was the alliston and district snowmobile okay. club trails so okay. he must be okay, in that area right. yeah yeah. yeah, and he says sometimes he even has a volunteer join him on the trails. Oh, right on. She, she looks awesome. happy. She looks like yeah. she's she wants to be there. His yeah. daughter standing beside the groomer, big skid <laughs> on the back. Nice. Yeah. yeah. He said he's trying to watch the stream tonight. He's Rev Dude Eight Hundred on YouTube. Keep up nice. the good work, guys. His name's Ryan. So yeah. yeah. Sloby says, fresh ribbon, boys. There's nothing yeah. better than when you come across that in Quebec. We came across that last year when we were out, and we all took turns enjoying it, right? It's like, no, let me go, let me go. We yeah, brought a nice, yeah. a nice song on your communicator, and oh, that's nothing better. Yeah. Nothing better. Yeah. So now we're on to, uh, that was it for the fan photos, so thank you very much. And those fan photos were brought to you by Fast Track Traction Products, Fast Track with no k.co and enter snow in your shopping cart and get that free toolkit and then let me know how you made out so nice uh, awesome. made out nice with a purse it's not made out made out but yeah fast track's <laughs> awesome yeah so 
Anyway, nice. these are the the these are John's photos here now. Oh, right on. Yeah. So what are we looking Look at? The size here, of that shock. I know. Um, so before I jump into there, I just saw that Donnie wrote in and asked what's turnaround on shocks rebuilt. Um, so I already answered that a little bit earlier, but we're about one, one and a half weeks right now. So we're we're doing pretty good. Yeah, but awesome. um, those those Honda talents, we did one uh, in the middle of summer and then we had a rush on them. The guys that we did them for were just so happy. We found so many engineering problems with the, with the, the shocks that uh, it was easy to make dramatic improvements with those things. Really? Um, and I don't know why that happens. People ask me that all the time. You know, they, they buy these $30,000 side by sides and then they ride terribly and they, you know, we, we do our thing and, you know, the bill might come to 1500 or 2k if we need to service all four of them, revalve them, uh, respring them, take them in and out, test them, that kind of thing. But then they get them back and they go, oh my God, it's so much better. Why, 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 why is it so far off of the mark? But in, in these talons, for example, uh, the top, the top tender spring um, was completely crushed when, when the machine's just under its own weight. So it was out of the equation. It was super stiff. The rebound was, was incredibly slow. So the, 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 there's no way the wheel could recover after a bump to get ready for the next bump uh, north of like 15 kilometers an hour. So they were pretty easy to, to make some dramatic improvements with. And it was, it was a fun project. We've, we've got a test track on our, our property that um, we, we go through a calibration process to evaluate how they are stock so that we can then uh, quantify the improvement when we're done. So it was a, it was a neat, uh, neat project, those talents. That's pretty amazing, though, John, when you see stuff like that, when someone goes and spends that amount of money. And they don't know any better. They're driving and riding it around, and it's like how terrible it is. And, and you know, and then they bring it to you, and, like, that's unreal. That's, that's mind-blowing. But I get it. I, I mean, like you said, when I asked you when we first started the show, like, when you get a snowmobile, what's it set up for? And your answer is you know, a guy that's 110 pounds. Like, so you think of how many people are out there riding, and, they, you know, brand-new sled. You think you're happy with it, but it can do so much better if it was set up properly. Like, it, it's mind-blowing. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I've got to assume that the, the guy or team or girl or engineer that's in charge of suspension calibration is probably also looking after decals, uh, you know, yeah. tire selection, ski yeah. color, um, you know, so many different hats that they can't, you know, they can't, they don't have the ability or the time to do a great job and, then they probably lean on and expect the vendor uh, to be giving them gold, you know, and, yeah, yeah. and maybe the vendor had that thing nailed eight years ago, but then, you know, the, the manufacturer has changed that chassis three times since then. And now the, the, the damper is woefully uncalibrated for the, for its new life. You know, we kind of saw that when Skidoo went from the R motion to the R motion X and they went up like 10% in spring rate and should have gone up 40%, you know? <laughs> and um, I just, I don't know where the ball gets dropped, but, mm -hmm. you know, over and over and over again, we, we scratch our head. We, we put in something that we think is right. And we kind of cringe and the customer phones us back and says, it's so much better, you know? And yeah. we just, that happens over and over again. And it kind of gives us the confidence to, to, to wonder uh, why is the base calibration sometimes so far off the target? And uh, it, it's my funny buddy, too. Sorry, sorry go ahead. It's funny too, John, how many people I know that have gone to you for either snowmobiles and motorcycles and all of them, every one of them have said this and they don't even know each other. They said, every time I buy a new unit, I'm going to see John right off the hop. Like even when the, the, the vehicle's brand new. Yeah, we're, we're, we're so fortunate. We've got uh, GP bikes down in, in Ajax. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, with the Ajax border there, you know, there's a couple salesmen there that they'll sell a, a bike and then they'll look the guy or girl in the face and say, you got to take it there yeah. for 150 bucks. And we go through it and measure it up and, and, and 
you know, make it 30, 40% better, just maybe changing the rear spring. You know, we've, we've noticed a trend and uh, switching over to motorcycles, but you guys will see the parallel here that mm -hmm. uh, the Japanese churn out a motorcycle and they, they think everybody's 140 pounds, you know, <laughs> and, and arrogantly us in North America think, how dare they, don't they know that we're 200 pounds, you know, well, yeah. but, that's not reality. So the, the true reality is that every motorcycle that crosses the pond, you know, really should have the springs changed for, for full size uh, Canadian and American guys and girls, you know, yeah. but, but then we, then we say, well, these things are made just down the road in Quebec or, you know, why, what's going on. And uh, I, I don't really have a great answer for that other than, you know, we apply the same rules of power sport physics in terms of sag. You know, when you get on your vehicle, it should settle 30%. You know, that leaves a third of the travel uh, above you for holes and dips mm -hmm. and two thirds below you for bumps. And if you follow that super simple rule of thumb, you can make a dramatic improvement in the safety and the comfort of the ride, you know. Yeah. Well, before we came on air, I was saying to John, that I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to bring my T70 next year, John, in the spring, because I, yeah. I got to get it set up. Like it's, it's, it's brutal, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. you know, people have got this phobia that stiffer springs equal a, a stiffer ride, but that's not the case. Yeah. You know, if, it, like I say, if, if you bought 12 inches of travel from your dealer and when you sit on it, you're using up seven inches of that travel. That's not right. No, um, no. And, and a lot of the, a lot of the linkages in, in the suspension, we hear the term progressive linkages. And what that means is in the top of the travel, the suspension is very soft and compliant. And then as it nears bottom, it's accelerating the shock and, and making the ride firmer. So if you're living down in the bottom, you are not enjoying a nice ride. Nope. If you add a bunch of spring rate or preload, and get it up in the top of its travel, it becomes way softer and way more compliant. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bit of a, you know, a misnomer kind of thing. So yeah. what yeah. do we got here, Gary? <clears throat> Look at that. That was uh, earlier this season. We were uh, um, that. Yes. If you know, uh, you probably might not notice, but see how long the reservoir is on that Elka shock absorber. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Uh, that's one of my custom uh, shocks that we engineered here in the building. And uh, what we were finding was uh, we were running lower sags on the XRSs to, to get those A-arms flat. And as such, the suspension was operating in the lower half of its travel a lot. And, and what happens is the IFP in that reservoir uh, that's separating the high pressure nitrogen from the oil was riding very close to the bottom and, and causing a, a Fox float like pressure rise in the damper. So we ended up compensating by opening the clickers to compensate for the shock being near bottom. And that was a band aid. So um, I, I talked to the engineers at Elka and, and our shocks from accelerated technologies have longer reservoirs on them. So mm -hmm. the shock is far more linear in its, uh, in its support and its response. That's amazing. That's the stage four there. I, obviously, John says right yeah. out there. So, yeah. Okay. It is. You can see the red knob on to on the top of the shock, just in the shadow yep. uh, of the of the uh, bulkhead, and then you can't quite see it in this photo unless uh, uh, Gary's able to to move the photo up. But it'll. Ha yeah, you can. There, you can see the oh. red the red anodized rebound knob. It's nice. Just at the bottom of the shock. And okay. that was another mandate in our engineering was to, uh, to, to put knobs on the shock. So you don't need to dig for a screwdriver. Um, that's an amazing idea. Well, it's, yeah, it's not cool. It's, 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 but that's just, just like you said, though, John, you're thinking about extra things when you're on the side of a trail, right? Rather than having to dig out a screwdriver or a tool or something, right? If it's yeah. not yeah. easy to adjust, people won't do it. That's right. right? I, I, exactly. And uh, yeah. it's the same way. And we, you know, we, we sell hundreds of adjustable limiter straps for that exact reason. You know, I've been on the side of the trail and, and knowing a sled needs a shorter limiter strap to control squat and ski lift. 
and you know it's 25 below zero and the skid is packed with ice your hands can't feel your fingers and uh, and you want to pull a bolt out crush the skid bend a frozen strap and put it in a new hole and it's yeah, like yeah, i'm just not gonna, happening. i'm not gonna happening. just slow down right and, and <laughs> good point who likes yeah. doing that so yeah. well the adjustable strap we have and i think i've got one here uh, within reach but uh, this is a track link product and you can see the strap it bolts top and bottom and right here is the adjuster bolt it's 13 millimeter or half inch for our american friends and uh you, it takes can you make them bigger, Gary? So, sorry, John, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, you oh, yeah, for bigger, sure. Gary? Absolutely. Sorry, I just wanted to see that. Sorry, John. Yeah, no, no, don't apologize. You. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a track, uh, track link product. Uh, we nice. sell we sell a pile of them, but uh, try to get the glare off of that nut. But, yeah, you can see that nut, half-inch nut. It draws the strap into the, into the horseshoe, oh, awesome. and this strap will span about four, four-and-a-half holes of an OEM strap which wow. is wow huge, that's huge, huge adjustment huge ability and it's it's infinite you know you can you can you you need to turn that bolt four times to equivalent one equivalent to the equivalent of one hole one limiter strap hole okay. so you've got all that you know as the trails soften midday and and the snow starts to just get a little bit of push in it mm -hmm. you can pull over add one turn takes about eight seconds you know nice Come on, like I, I so it. do you just pack a you pack a ratchet in your tool in your yeah. bag then and do it? No, I don't put it in my tool, I keep it in my pocket. Nice. Well, yeah. If it's buried in the toolkit, you you'll go, eh, I'll do it tonight, you know. Is but it, if is it easy to spin though? Could they put a big knob on that instead that you could just reach underneath like the ski do shocks? Um, it's it's easy to spin. I use a stubby ratcheting wrench, mm -hmm. uh, a gear wrench, ratcheting yeah, wrench. Yeah, with the yeah, the box with the box with the ratchet in it. Exactly. And then yeah. what, what we do is we color a little Sharpie line in the middle of that, that hex. So you can kind of uh, watch it as you make a ah. turn. And um, it's, it, and yeah, I, I, I often wear a tech vest and I keep it in the pocket of my, uh, my tech nice. vest. And, uh, and then I don't have an, any excuses. I'll pull over to the side of the trail and, and give it a turn. I don't think I would see a, a knob on it because it's, it's too close to the to the center spring where it sits and uh it's you know it uh, it would True. bang around in there a bit too much when the strap is loose now True. is that universal for all manufacturers john like you can get it for every manufacturer it's not just yeah. for skidoo or polaris okay awesome the one the one strap we've put on uh, polaris arctic cat yamaha and skidoo and That's it's great. um to, to bring it back here we keep this in stock these straps but you can see all the holes so we we put the one strap goes around the top arm and then there's uh, option, yeah. options there where how you want to mount it and then the bottom strap goes down around the bottom arm and then the horseshoe points back beside the center shock absorber so i i you reach down under the sled you put your finger on it and rotate it out make your change and let go of it and hop back on your sled it's that's it's, awesome it's literally a 10 second change so how long have you had that genius. for john uh we've been selling them for three seasons now okay right on. the first year we sold eight uh the second year we sold 150 and, nice. and we ordered wow. 300 of them this year so right on what's the what's the retail price point of that i'd like one for roscoe uh 149 canadian oh Amazing. that's great that's yeah. well, awesome it's, it's one of the easiest checks to write man you use that that's thing awesome. once and and now you can because i tell people you know, often when they when they leave when their sled leaves our shop, you know, we say this is going to hopefully be the best snowmobile you've ever had, um, but it's not going to be perfect um, because I hope that you adjust that strap up or down until you find where perfect is. Perfect is yeah. You know, because yeah, even yeah. even two people that were physical clones might want something slightly different, different. in terms of response. You know. Yeah maybe super, super light bar effort and, 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 you know, they drone along at 40 kilometers an hour, or I want to, you know, stretch that a little bit to 50 kilometers an hour and, uh, and yep. not do what I do. So that's a, that's an invaluable tool, that thing. That is awesome. 
Awesome. Thanks I didn't for even know that, that existed. That's awesome. Yeah, right on. That's every, every, every snowmobile should have one of those and the right torsion springs. If I had a if I had a Christmas wish, it would be that. So yeah. look at that's sometimes awesome. now. we we'll get out I the know, cash hold register. Hold I gotta Holy. get I gotta get out the that's a that's the mountain madman. Yeah. He's Jesus. He's, he's putting Thank it you, out buddy. there. Yeah, hold on a second here. We gotta put you on screen first. I got too many mice going on here. <laughs> and he's the yeah <laughs> sometime is now with the 20 fucker thank oh, you so much buddy that's Love awesome it. yeah yeah he's he's top of the heap now man top that's of the awesome. mountain so right I, these are dual rate springs man this is the this on the renegade i get it nice all right, so let's talk about this. Are you there, John? Yeah, sorry, you cut out for a you second. You cut out, Gary. We actually, Gary, repeat what you just said. Oh, am I here now? Yeah, you're, am you're I back. back? You're back these, now. these are dual rate spring. These are dual rate springs. I'd like them. This is what I'd like to upgrade on the Renegade when I get it. Okay, right yeah. on. So what we found the the history behind this product, you see that we kind of created in our shop. Those are springs that we kind of picked the rates and we found a a, a spring supplier and uh, and had them made to our specs. Uh, and had those billet spring clips on the bottom machined. But that is was for the XRS because uh, we see so many of those every winter and the XRS owners uh, are under the impression that they own a good quality shock absorber. And um, and now they've unfortunately lost rebound. But, but when you've got a shock, when you bought a shock, when you opened your wallet, and bought a shock with piggyback shocks, uh, or you bought a sled piggyback shocks with compression and rebound, um, you're not probably going to be shopping for Elkitts right away. So we created that spring kit to drop on the Pro 36 ski shocks on the front of the Gen 4 XRS uh, to get the ride height down. Um, there's a If you look at your XRS ski shocks, there's a little circlip Skidoo uh, and KYB put on there because uh, they lost the lock rings, I don't know, seven, eight years ago for, for cost or weight or complexity or whatever. But um, there's a little lock ring that locks that shock at 10 mils of preload. And that gives that XRS the 11 degree A-arm angle. And uh, Gary, one of the photos I sent you was a black and a yellow uh, Skidoo viewed from the front and one is stock and one has got dual rate or actually triple rate springs on it and you triple can see rate. that yeah you can see the dramatic difference in ride height and uh and and how flat the a-arms are but you can we'll shoot to that. that in a minute yeah. um yeah. but what i if anybody needs some help getting to sleep one night i did a 17 minute video <laughs> <laughs> on dual rate springs explained it's called on on youtube and uh what it is is it talks about uh you know the theory and the reasoning and the explanation behind dual rate springs and to quickly go over it without boring you is if you take two um two two kilogram springs and you put one on top of the other and you measure them in a rate tester what do you think they would measure at and what's the what's the original height of them? The, the 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 rate of the two springs in this example is two kilograms per millimeter, which is relevant because that's the spring rate on the XRS ski shocks. They're the yep. two kilogram springs, and you put one on top of the other, and you measure the rate of them. What do you think they would measure? At? I'm not even going to guess because yeah, I'm, I know I'm probably yeah, going to be way too high. It's, it, it, it's funny because I've heard oh, four and I is what I'm, you should think it would be right. Like, think, or you'd think what was, well, was it one and a half? It's one. It's no one. <laughs> the answer is one. What? So good Lord. So here's, here's another example, Rich. If you take a two kilogram spring yeah. and you take your hacksaw and you cut it in half, you now own two, four kilogram springs. What? Is that right? Yes. Wow. The, the, the rate of the spring is a function of the diameter of the steel and the length. 
Uh, right? Okay. So if, if I cut a spring in half, I doubled the rate of it. I doubled the remaining rate of the uh, spring. Yeah, yeah. And conversely, okay. if I put two of them on top of each other, they get softer because the same diameter of steel is now longer and has more steel to share the load and it'll deflect more. Interesting. Yeah. So That's cool. when you un understand that theory and, and my, my video talks about it and we put the Doubles. springs in the rate yeah. tester and then we prove it, it's kind of cool. Hmm. But a dual rate spring basically starts softer and then after the, see that white collar there when yeah, that yeah. white collar bottoms out it uh it um, the top part there. Yeah. yeah when it hits the preload adjust ring it we say it locks out the top tender spring and then now the rate is whatever that bottom spring is oh, so uh the nice. stocks the stock spring rate on the XRS ski shock is two kilograms. The, the, the 900 turbo is 2.07 and the 850 is 1.97. So for, for the exam, for the sake of example, they're both two kilograms, right? And so that spring kit uh, starts at a 1.6, which is 30% softer, way softer. And it goes to a 2.6. Wow. So the benefits are, when I put that spring kit in a sled and I take the jack out, whoo, the, the A arms come down and they sit flat. That's you, what you, you want. Yeah. You've changed yeah. it from a motocross bike to an F1 car that nice. fast, right? Yeah. There you yeah. go. And, there you and then go. a lot of people think, oh my God, it's going to bottom like crazy. Well, no, it's not because an inch below sag, I've created the height of that crossover, designed it to bottom out and go to a 2.6, which is. 30% stronger than stock. So it doesn't crash into bottom. So you're getting so, the best of both worlds. Yes. We made the yes. window window of that uh, way, 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 way bigger. It uh, It's more comfortable. The bar effort is lighter and you can ride it harder and it doesn't bottom it, and it handles better. It's, it, it's it, it blows my mind, John, that the manufacturers are so far off. Like it really is like, I, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's totally. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Totally. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Cause that spring kit is, you know, we, we retail it for 450 bucks for the, the two tenders, the two crossovers, the two main springs and the two, uh, the two billet spring clips and, and a, a single spring is a hundred bucks. So yeah, but for 400 yeah. bucks to me on a, on a $20,000 snowmobile, please charge me the $400 for my sled's going to ride much better. I That's know. the way or I have that option things. or have that yeah. option at the dealer. Or have the option, order, Gary, right, right. right? Yeah. Like say, yeah. Yeah. If, if this is what you want, spend the extra four. like that's, that's mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. I got some house cleaning here to do, Rich. Uh, mm -hmm. It's from our friend Corey. Hold oh, me, Corey. Yes, I did thank him there. Yep. Thanks, buddy. There we go, buddy. <laughs> thank you so yep. much. <laughs> Thanks for the bruise, Gary. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Oh, that's yeah, great. That uh, my friend Adam just got dual rate springs for his MXZ at uh, six. His MXZX six hundred R that he bought. So the. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the difference that makes. He swears by him, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I just want to. I was just reading a question from uh, Michigan Outlaws there about the limiter strap. Yes. Oh shit! Did I miss it? Sorry about that. How does that strap wear in? It looks like if you're to leave it in the same spot, it might wear through the strap a little bit. Uh, we haven't seen that. Um, uh, we're we're usually adjusting the strap up and down a little bit. Um, I think the reality is, is, is once we use our dual rate spring set in the front mm. of the machine and we get the A arms flat, um, you're likely never going to adjust preload again up front because the engine weight stays consistent, right? Mm -hmm. The, the ski yeah. shocks don't really know or care that you or your wife, uh, or your kids or your partner piled on the back of the sled. Um, they're just holding up the motor basically. Um, so if, if you keep the ski shock preload and ride height a constant, and then you go out back and you adjust the torsion springs to stay at about three, three and a half inches of sag, then the last bit of tuning we do is with the limiter strap. Um, and so I've never seen that strap ever really wear with the exception, um, I'll just grab it here. So on the top, top, uh, where it goes on the upper arm on the skidoo, for example. Here, let me, and the let me move this back here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. man. 
I got too much going on here. There we go. <laughs> You're busy, man. <laughs> yeah. So on the top, you'll you'll notice that it goes through an, a steel shelf, and that's really to protect the track from hitting it uh, on decel. When you let go of the throttle, the top of the track yeah. will hang down and can rub that strap. So they put that steel cover there. But on the bottom, uh, we we need that strap to stay tight so that it doesn't touch the track clips going underneath it. I've seen guys put this strap in, um, you know, too loose. Too holes, yeah. And then when you when the center shock compresses, that'll go down and it'll hit the track clips. And I've seen them buzz buzz off and mm -hmm. cut through that way. But that's not really a fault of the manufacturer. That's just, a, you know, uh, put, poor attention to, to yeah. installation kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, for the Michigan Outlaws, uh, yeah. I, I've never seen that strap really take any – any significant wear over time good question thanks yeah i just didn't ask the Michigan out michigan outlaws question because i thought it was dumb <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no there's no dumb there's question. no dumb question no i'm, I'm, only, keep, I'm only kidding yeah he knows that i'm only yeah. kidding yeah. and wait a minute like it's not that it's it's not just michigan outlaws it's the michigan <laughs> come on where is it there you go. Outlaws. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> anyway, that's cool. So here we go. Here, you can see this one's sitting a lot lower, right? That's sharp and low. Oh, yeah. Look at the front end. Yeah. I see you're almost you're level on those. Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah, that saying. one, you can see the white of our crossover piece inside those shocks, mm -hmm. and that's indicative of one that has our dual rate spring kit. So um, nice. So, yeah. It makes a but do you make them for the Renegade X? Like, do you make them for the KYB? Yes, we we um we the ones that we custom made were for the XRS, the Pro Thirty Six, but the X package uh, KYB shocks are slightly smaller diameter, and uh, so we've got product for that as well. And um, it it uh, we've got spring rate options. Um, you know, we generally will. We'll change them for two stroke or four stroke. Um, the tender spring is slightly different in the ones that we've we've uh, created for the X package stuff. But uh, but yeah, we've it's been very it's it's been a really growing market for us. Um, you know, it's it's really been a home run. It's there's no downside to the dual rate other than the you know buying it you know and opening mm -hmm. your wallet that first time. But then well, when you ride it, you just you know there's so many benefits. Like I talk about having the 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 shock cross over an inch below sag, mm -hmm. right? So when you hop on it, um, and and the, I'm doing the setup for the customers in the shop, I push down on the front bumper and it goes down about an inch, and then those shocks cross over and get onto the big rate, right? Mm -hmm. And so that gives you your when you land the thing, it doesn't just pancake to bottom. Yeah, it, it'll it give you a whoosh and give yeah. you that support. The other benefit is cornering. You pitch that thing into a corner and, and the dual rate springs won't let it body roll. It'll pitch in a little bit, get onto the 2.6 main and stop. It's almost like a smart torsion or a, a smart sway bar. Sorry. It, yeah. uh, it just kind of locks, it helps to lock out and, and it does it very gently. So it's a, it's, it's a really a win-win. So we've, we've been developing them for the Fox um, QS3 platform, uh, the Walker Evans, where we've got more and more and more fitment for the Walker Evans. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been a it's been a good product for us. I must handle yeah, the corners yeah. like it's on rails. Oh yeah. Like I, so that was my next question too. So you you can help with the Walker Evans too, obviously, right? Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah. The, the the Polaris, you know, and we always wonder where the engineering comes from. Is it is it the Polaris engineering requesting? Is it Walker and engineers supporting? Right. Uh, is it a joint relationship? We hope. Um, but for example, the the spring rates I've got a. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the photo. Yeah, just right there in the photo. Uh, there's an XC um, 850 on the bench there that we just designed and did shock fitment for, and the XC ski shock is a 1.4 kilogram. It's like an 82 pound Jeez. foot spring. Wow. So it's significantly lighter than the than the Skidoo product, you know, mm -hmm. stock. And 
I'll see if I can turn the laptop and see if you can see see how flat the A arms are on that thing. Oh wow! Here, let me get you big here. You keep. We might as well just leave you up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! That's so. That's oh, exactly. No. Oh, yeah. What look at that. So that's exactly totally like you're that, right? See that? That's yeah. bone stock. So wow. Polaris is on to something, right? They've they've got some. They they understand some things that. Uh, other manufacturers aren't, you know, really caring about or, or mm -hmm. worrying about, but they've done it with a light, light spring rate. And mm -hmm. so those walkers will bottom, you know, if it was just left up to the springs, mm -hmm. but that's where the, remember the needle design I was talking yeah. about earlier in the show. Yeah. Um, so they use that needle strategy to keep the shock from bottoming. From bottoming. Um, nice. But we, we kind of like to assist that with a, with a rising rate spring. Because yeah. when you use the needle design to keep from bottoming, it does it by ramping the compression up like 250%, yeah, which the does, not, terrible, right? does yeah. not equal comfort, right? Rebound, yeah. So the shock is soft in the top goes, and yeah. goes, you know, yeah. it goes super strong in the bottom. Yeah. So uh, the Walker Evans uh, have been responding really well to our dual rate spring system. You know, okay, there's some, awesome. some of my, uh, my cohorts out in, uh, um, uh, Newfoundland, uh, uh, one of my, one of my friends out in Newfoundland, I was talking to him at the snowmobile show and he says, yes, bye. I got a bucket full of them Walker Evans needles. <laughs> he, he just <laughs> takes them funny. out, takes yeah. them out of every shock he serves really? and puts his own, uh, his own solution into it. So that's, hilarious. that's amazing. Hey, another house cleaning I got to do. Where's this from? This is from email. It's uh, ten dollars and sixty nine cents. He said, "This is for John for setting up my Can Am six by six. I jump it daily and thrash it. Feels better than my Raptor." That's, That's from awesome. Scott Phillips. Thank you, Scott nice. Phillips. That's yeah, awesome, he, Scott. He went down in the description and went to the PayPal donation link and <laughs> fired one <laughs> off. Thank oh, you nice. so much. I was going nice. to say, John, is this is this a customer or is this your wife? That's my wife. That's my sweetheart. <laughs> now, is she checking your sag here, or what is she doing? <laughs> Good thing it wasn't a video. <laughs> Rich, I love you, man. I love you. That was that That's wasn't funny. in Doug Yell. That That's wasn't awesome. in Doug <laughs> Checking his sag. So, yeah. what we're doing here, Gary, and and there's probably a, a photo in behind this with one more person on that machine. Is uh, we finally it took us about a year but we came up with a, a solution for torsion springs for the R motion X. Um, nice. and like, like I mentioned that those arms and that R motion X are a lot longer than the R motion. So the, the, the possibility for comfort and shock control is a lot better, but they, uh, they don't do not have the support that uh, big guys need uh, for, for springs. Um, we had uh, the sled in, um, in the back corner there is uh, is a great uh, good new customer of ours, um, and he he's about three hundred pounds, mm -hmm. and so when we put him on the machine, it was like six and a half inches of sag, and so he was this far from the coupler blocks and had no ride comfort in that machine whatsoever. So we Jen and I here on that in that photo are are mimicking a two three. 340, 350. Yeah, you better be careful if she's watching. <laughs> Drag race is going to be over soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so well, yeah, we're in. The two of us are probably 350 in, in all honesty. Yeah. And uh, so that's a, uh, that's, you know, that's not far off a big, a big lad with a fuel caddy on the back and, uh, and a case of yeah. your beer there, Gary. Sorry. No. Yeah, I, no, you can't take ballistics on the trail. Sorry. No, they freeze. If I ever, if I ever found a ballistic on the trail, I'd be mad at the person that left it there. Right. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. drives me up the wall. So yeah. I know it does. Save too. it, save it for when you get home. Right. Uh, Brad, yeah. Brad Hitchcock was asking, uh, just confirming the price. And I think you said they're around 400 bucks for a pair of the front springs. They're uh, four fifty for the complete set for the XRS, mm -hmm. um, and then we have a bit of a special for six fifty. We do the center shock as well, so okay. it's a bit of a reduced price. And uh, again, we've touched on it in the past, in earlier in the show, and we could talk about it for two hours. But uh, we find tremendous benefit in 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 handling from the apex out. Uh, with with light 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 springs on the center shock absorber, 
Okay. So uh, that's that's also included in the 650 price uh, Canadian for our, our U.S. Okay. friends. Um, we include the center shock dual rate setup. As we find a lot of those uh, tender springs on the Skidoo center shock will break um, two, three years in. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of our customers have found that. Um, the top, they have the Skidoo center shock. OEM has a dual spring system, but it's not as pretty as ours. It it coil binds that top spring, and that's how it gets the rate to shift. And uh, springs don't like to coil bind. They, they will break after, you know, 10,000 cycles or so. Mm -hmm. And um, so our system uses that same white plastic crossover to control, to guide the two springs and keep them true and low friction and to control the crossover point. So yeah. now, John, and at 650 price... bucks Canadian, that's, that, that's like only like 300 bucks American. That's like 150 US, I think. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I haven't, and Rich, you can attest to this because I right. haven't said this in a while. It's frugal, dude. <laughs> frugal, dude approved. Yeah, for sure. Uh, John, question yeah, for you. That that's a cheap. Would you be able to set up my XCR for the same price? Like, or is it different? Sorry um, to put you on the spot like that, but I'm, I'm just for my players. Uh, my Faithful. two Polaris fans out there. Fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, my hat's off to Polaris. In the last few years, they've been making some awesome snowmobiles, and it's great to see. I haven't yet had a chance to ride one for long enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Jeff Steenbacher hopped on my sled once when we were doing a photo shoot and then our video shoot for Snowmobiler TV and wouldn't give it back. So I had I to ride. That. I remember that video. I remember that video. <laughs> yeah, I had to ride his uh, – Polaris for a little bit and and I was just feeling it out kind of falling in love and and he left me for dead on my sled uh, um, but, uh, but yeah to, to to circle back there um, the we had an XCR go out today at 21 850 and um, basically it's torsion springs you know I don't know a sled out there that's got the right torsion springs in them yep. and uh, torsion springs I actually drilled some more holes yeah that was a machine is that it? I, drilled, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, drilled some holes in his limiter strap and uh, put a set of torsion springs in it and adjusted the preload on the ski shocks to get that flat A-arm angle. Okay. And, and he's going to start there and, okay. and ride that. Um, yes, dual rate springs on the skis would have made a dramatic improvement, mm -hmm. but uh, he kind of he, he was kind of watching his budget mm -hmm. and had just bought this beautiful machine and wanted – didn't want to go whole hog. He kind of wanted to evaluate it, how it was, and I'm I'm all for that. So yeah, but what, when what when my it, sled comes this? in and I want to see you and I want to go whole hog, what are we talking? I want to, I want to just <laughs> if I you just, have to I'm ask, Rich. There's a saying: no. if you have to ask. Well, yeah. well I, the like, it's I don't funny. Mean to put you on the spot. I just because I you know what I would I'm I'm actually very interested in trying it to see see how it is. So well, you know you you want to you want to see how good is it stock you know and right. before you open your wallet i'm the same way i want to you know i want to know what you know i don't want to spend money if i don't have to so mm -hmm. I, i'd like to ride the thing and then say oh man this thing it's great until i ride it at 80 percent or above and then right. the thing comes unglued i can't keep the inside ski on the ground and it mm -hmm. bottoms all the time yeah. and then when i add compression to the shocks it it helps but it gets harsh Mm -hmm. and, and then you can come in to me and, and, and we can have a conversation and, and then and, work and then figure out what to adjust. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. you know, limited, uh, dual rate springs, uh, on the ski shock, the Polaris, uh, what we find is the center shock spring is too long. Okay. And, and we can only go up about equivalent of two limiter strap holes and then, they, well, you're, you're unthreading the preload as you go so that you keep a minimal amount of support on that fulcrum of the center of the machine. And, and then all, all of a sudden, if you were to go to a third limiter strap hole, if it existed, there wasn't on this XCR. Okay. I had to get out my, uh, my, my hole drill from yep. stud and tracks yep. and knock a couple more in there. And, uh, and then, and uh, once, once I got down to like limiter strap hole number three, now I could no longer back the spring off and I was adding preload and okay. you never, never want to do that. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I would do a shorter spring on the center, uh, put the right torsion springs and then go um, okay. and try that. And so you'd be, uh, 
556, 50, you know, you're into seven ish for mm -hmm. parts and maybe call it a thousand um, out the door. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be an amazing thousand you spend on that thing, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Good, man. Good to know. Yeah. Well, hey, what is, what is this sitting on here? What does this do? Is it, does it, does it Wait. vibrate? <laughs> um, what, what those are is they're they're kind of disguised because we've cut plywood and put them on top to protect the aluminum, but though that's an intercomp set of uh, of racing scales. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing in this photo is we're measuring the OEM balance of the snowmobile, and and it was terrible stock. The really? uh, yeah, if we the skis left to right were off about forty pounds in terms Whoa. of support. And then if we just, if we ignore the front half of the snowmobile and we look at these, that's the rear half, the center was supporting about 80% of the weight of the back of the snowmobile. Wow. And so there's a machine that when you look at the throttle, it's going to, it's going to rotate the snowmobile and unweight the skis because the center shock in that situation is way stronger than the rear spring and damper uh, system. So part of our setup is to is to reverse that, is to get the center sh shock out of the equation, we say, and get the back supporting. And as soon as you do that, that sled quits acting like it's three feet long and acts like it's eight. Nice. You know, like, and awesome. just think of that, that time when you've let go of the throttle mm -hmm. and you do the bobblehead, right, coming yeah. into a corner. And that's exactly what's going on is the machine has fulcumed over the center shock and started to pivot on that center shock coming into the corner. Goodness, and, huh? uh, if, if we talk about when we're doing setups and racing that moment in time, if we could, if we could pull that center shock out of the machine, it would just flatten right out. It would park the skis down. It would park the back of the sled down and it would come into the corner like, like a rally car and just, composed right right on nice. so the scales the scales are helping us quantify uh those numbers and not just imagine them right that's pretty awesome Look yeah that so that this crazy, is a, uh, <clears throat> yeah it's wild man i've learned a lot tonight I can tell. <laughs> yeah hey we're not even like a third of the way through his photos yeah. <laughs> that's awesome that's great man this it's might good. be our 24-hour marathon i don't know I, this is it's really interesting man this is probably the mm -hmm. most thing i've taken in this is awesome and the chat is the chat is enjoying it i think oh, yeah. everybody's yeah. learning something no it's i'm learned something so if, it's great. I, if we can drag this out another hour i don't have to do the dishes or put my dog <laughs> in the hey that's same here same here uh, yeah no, that's... so this All right. this is uh, like a $500 tool that we have uh, that basically it, it, you park the shock on there and uh, it's measuring center to center, uh, okay. but unbelievably accurately. And uh, some shock absorbers, um, I don't think any shock absorbers other than one I made for Kirk Hastings uh, for Kane's quest. Uh, they don't have a top out spring in them but a lot of motorcycle racing shocks do. So this mm -hmm. tool allows me to stretch the shock, uh, crush that top out spring and accurately measure uh, preloads if I'm working on ride height. So That's wild. Interesting. Having the right tools is, is oh, everything. Yeah. Key. Right. Right. Like I know a lot of guys that just rebuild shocks, but in their garage and filling them with fluid and stuff, but it isn't this. <laughs> that's for sure that's for damn yeah. sure yeah you know this we, is amazing oh he went with some ah uh, so he took the walker evans off nice stage four oh, he went with the stage yeah. four nice so I'll, I'll correct you here oh um, sorry <laughs> the, no you're, you're right but he's not buying these shocks oh, okay um, that was me doing fitment oh uh, okay, oh, okay. I've, okay i've got a couple of really great customers that said i want to buy elkas for my new xcr and so I put the word out on Facebook and, and a great customer, Mike, uh, chimed in, brought me a sled, left it with me for two weeks, and, and I measured the hell out of it and uh, designed, well, I checked, I didn't design, I, I checked fitment basically on some existing uh, shock absorbers. So that, that shock absorber sitting in that chassis right now 
is exactly an XS XP uh, previous generation Skidoo ski shock um, okay. with bushings for a Polaris, right? Skidoo uses um, traditionally a 30 millimeter wide uh, shock fitment bushing um, and Arctic Cat slash Yamaha use a curiously a 25.4 millimeter wide. Uh, for those of you with a tape measure, that's an inch. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and Polaris is, is they run a little bit special uh, fitment that's a little smaller than Skidoo. But, but in this case, now I can go into my inventory, grab a Skidoo uh, MXZ 600 shock from, you know, pre pre 2017 and change the bushings and drop it into a Polaris and uh, change the springs, of course, because of that spring uh, um, difference that Polaris engine has engineered around. So, right on. Cool. Nice. So it's nice. Yeah, you're yeah. always thinking out of the box too, like, like yeah. thinking ahead. I've got an XCR in here. Let's measure it up for fitment, right? Oh yeah. We, you know, yeah. in here, if you notice the difference to, to a couple photos previous, uh, we now have got the scales on qual quality pieces, dollies. See that? Okay. Yeah, I see that yeah. right there. So the scale is on top of the dolly. So okay. it didn't it didn't change the zero point. I didn't have to re-zero the scale. Um, but now it allows scrub front to back between the skis and the track and left to right between the skis. So we get a very friction-free uh, number. It's very accurate. Um, and one of the things, it's it is not rocket science, but you can appreciate it is we drop this thing. Now this is post setup. So now this has got the right torsion springs in it, a little bit shorter limiter strap, mm -hmm. um, zero preload on the center shock, that kind of thing. And um, how much did it change by? It, it changed, it, the two numbers switched almost completely That's in nice terms sense. of center to rear. But what we've, what we, you, so that gives you a number, right? You've got a, mm -hmm. let's say, well, I could grab my phone and give you the numbers, but let's say um, the center shock absorber is is holding up now 60 pounds and the rear is holding up 180 mm -hmm. to pick a couple of numbers. What does it do when you sit on it? And that is is where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. Is um, you know, if, if the springs are are the same support, you know, it shouldn't change. It right. shouldn't change at all. Skip, but if right? it should stay, yeah. yeah and yeah. that's what we shoot for is, mm -hmm. is in our race sleds. I, I call them our race sleds. I, I shouldn't be trail sleds. But in <laughs> our fully developed sleds, when you get on, they the front end goes up and down. The front and the back go up and down the same. Same, yeah. And I challenge any of our viewers to do that to their sled. Mm -hmm. You get on 95% of the snowmobile it's and doing one or the other the front right. bumper rich yep. goes up. Yep. Yep. You can measure it with a tape measure. And what the yep. hell is that? You know, yeah. that's, that's an upside that you're riding a teeter totter, right? Yep. And you got on one end of the teeter totter and that's yep. not how a power sports vehicle should operate. Yeah. No, that's a good that's point. Wild. Wow. Yeah, man. Got a lot but, of look at the, these springs. So there, <laughs> there's a great, there's, there's myself doing a dual rate setup onto a Walker Evans um, mm -hmm. to, to give them that best of both worlds, you know, um, because we get the A-arms flat like Polaris. There's a stock spring. Yeah. Um, so you see that it is a dual rate spring, right? Right. Yep. So, you know, and we've seen these on old Indies for years, right? Yeah. Um, where the top coils were always crushed when, when the thing is sitting on the snow. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that spring at some point will collapse and get way stronger. That's just, This is a center shock absorber out of that. Uh, I think it's out of the XC. I don't think it's out of the XCR. No, the XCRs came with the uh, the high velocity, right? These, yeah. Exactly, the blue yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this spring system now we can keep it soft, 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 because when we, when a bump comes and misses the skis, we want it to, we want the front of that ski to eat it. We don't right. want it to lift that snowmobile at all. Right. That's good. That will make a huge difference yeah. oh. for sure. 
Because those are the shocks I had on my assault. Right, right. Yeah. Look at how level that A arm is. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think the angle finder has fallen victim to the glare. But uh, yeah, well, look at that. It's yeah. bang on level. You can't when, get it. when we shoot, what we shoot for, yeah, I can't see it. I can't see it. No, you can't. No. But what we shoot for is when the rider is on his or her machine with their knees touching the, the front, like a lot of us ride, and their hands on the bars, I want to see 0, 0.0 there. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and man, does that thing rail. And safe, yeah. safe, 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 right? Yeah. And that's the thing, eh? It makes a huge difference that you – I'm not saying to race around and go over the speed limit on trails, but, I mean, that, that probably helps a lot that's, going around the corner. Like, and we've all been there, right? Yeah. You're, you're maybe going through Algonquin on that hydro cut, mm -hmm. and you're coming a little quick into a corner, You're, yeah. and I'm not – I'm talking 40 kilometers an hour, and the, the, the trail is tightening up. It's tightening up. And all of a sudden, your inside ski starts Excellent. coming off the ground. Yep. Yep. That's right. exactly when some guy's coming the other way. Yep, exactly. And now yeah. you're at limit, right? Yep. You yep. can't you can't crank the bars and tighten it up, or you'll yep. roll that snowmobile. That's right. So you either got to mash the brake or the gas. Yep. And to try and get that inside ski down. So if I could give that customer a sled that would go through that corner at 80 kilometers an hour while he's holding a coffee in his hand, right. It is going to be so safe at the speed limit, and yeah. that's that's what we shoot for. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it must be nice though to hear back from your customers right after they've gone out and they come back and like, oh my lord, it's like night and day. Uh, yeah. I, I yeah. we encourage that with every one of them, yeah. and I, I try to tell them that hey, there's we hope it's going to be way better, yeah. but there's no way it's perfect, you know. Uh, we because so we want you to play with that limiter strap. We want you to keep an eye on the rear preload and adjust it as snow accumulates in the tunnel um, or your kid gets on or you put the fuel caddy on. If you keep that back end in the sag zone, then we have good confidence in, in the ride height of the, the front, we call it the rail ride height the, where we set the limiter strap. And uh, But we say, hey, sh shorten it up, you know, and yeah. get it so that it handles and there's a big misconception that a short limiter strap equals discomfort. And we really shoot holes in that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's a time and a place when we run a long strap, mm -hmm. it, it's usually off trail or yeah. when conditions are super bumpy and you want that skid to articulate under mm -hmm. the snowmobile. Hey, I'm all for a long strap, but when the trail flattens out and you want to get through it, you know, at the speed limit and keep the skis on the ground. Um, you know, that's when we, that's when there's some improvements to be made. So would you say John, most times when you're, you are turning, tuning a, a stock sled that you are changing the limiter strap most times? hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah. now there are, there are, there are a few of us running some pretty extreme setups that run a long limiter strap. Um, okay. But there is often no center shock in the snowmobile. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you digest that. Yeah. yeah nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, William, William McClearly, he shouts you out, John. He says, you're the professor of shock. What a terrific speaker. So clear and well-informed. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, William. We, uh, we, we try hard and we pay attention. So, uh, so I, I got a text uh, message from one of my buddies. He's not in the chats, but he's watching. Um, I'm curious as to what he's got to say about carbides and shimming skis. When you do this setup, he's just wondering if that changes everything too, as well, drastically, or that's a great question. Um, we're proponents of the Bergstrom carbide here. Okay. Uh, I ran when I, on previous on my Yamaha's, I wanted to turn the bars. I want that sled to turn, right? Mm -hmm. So we we were running sh like nine inch shaper bars on CNA Pro skis, um, so that that thing would turn when I wanted it to turn. But man, when I got to the hotel at the end of the day, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't lift a beer. You know, it, I was done. Mm -hmm. Well, we we found there's so much to be gained in other methods of setting up a snowmobile, and and one of them the 
we, you know, we, we stock them and sell the Bergstrom's here. And yes, they've got the beautiful triple point carbide um, that is, you know, extends the life of the carbide and, and keeps that third point, you know, on the snow and the ski pitches and turns. But the other thing that they throw in uh, with the purchase is the shims that go in at the back of the saddle under the spindle mm -hmm. and it, it lifts the ski tip up. See, and, and sorry, John, to interrupt you. And that's why he's asking, because with Polaris, you normally have to change, you, you change the shims on the skis yeah, because they're so, they, they lean, they tend to lean forward on, on, on the stock ones. So we always buy the, the shims for, for the skis. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. That's why. You no, no. And remember yeah. years ago, guys with the Yamahas were turning the shim around yeah. and putting the fat section to the back. Yeah. That was back in the nitro days because yeah. that thing was super nervous, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so what the, what the theory is, is there's, the theory is twofold. Um, the, the ski, when you go across it, you, ex, it exacerbates when you cross pavement and the, you can imagine the front of the skis dragging down, right? So if you look at your carbides, when you go to throw them out at the end of their service life, they're always worn more at the front than the back. It's just physics, right? It's yeah. like when uh, a brake rotor and a caliper, the leading edges of the brake pads will always wear first and the pad won't wear evenly um, just because of the, the wear is always in one direction. So the shim tips the front of the ski up and it, the, they found, the Bergstrom guys found an angle that they settled on that, that evens out that wear of the carbide over its life. Mm -hmm. But the real benefit to, to putting the pressure point behind um, is when the when the ski droops in front of the spindle now the ski will hunt all over the trail find buddy's track ahead of you yep, and, exactly and, and now that your poor snowmobile is is chasing the front of the ski yep but if you load the back of the ski and tip the ski tips up I'm trying to get in the picture here tip the ski tips up now the pressure point is behind the spindle so now the snowmobile is leading the ski and it goes down the trail dead straight so, okay. you know, there are some, that's theory and explanation of what's going on and it works. Now you can still have a darting snowmobile if it's set up poorly in, around that center shock absorber. But, uh, but basically the Bergstrom, you, you know, you, you hear, oh yeah, I, my sled wouldn't turn. I put CNA pros on it, big improvement. And well, it's, yeah, but you know, um, there's a time and a place for every mousetrap and every solution. And a lot of times we can fix a sled with a proper setup that m might not have needed that investment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I love the CNAs. I got a set coming for mine, but my new 22, but I'm not going to put them on every day. They're going to be a fluffy day ski, not a hard mm -hmm. pack ski kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so again, the Bergstrom is, uh, we love the product. It's, it's worth every cent and they've got some clever ideas that really ha have a, have a tangible improvement. Yeah. Yeah. It makes like we're, I'm going to the gripper ski, which is the wider ski that Polaris sells are usually on the, the out West sleds yeah. that they come on them. So, but uh, it's, it's valid. It's amazing that you said that because last year, like all my Polaris buddies, they usually change the shims on the skis and I didn't. And when I was in Quebec, that darting was just brutal because it was leaning. So like, it totally makes sense what you're saying. Right. So, oh yeah, it's uh, the yeah. ski tip is in control and then yep. you're just trying yep. to, you're bobbleheading yep. behind it. Right. So. Yep. Yeah. 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 Wow. Was Good question, yeah, we, Steve. Thank you. That was my buddy Steve asking that. That's so. great. Yeah, we we sell we sell the Bergstroms complete, and we also sell just the shim kit for okay. it's ridiculous, like thirteen dollars or something like that. Yeah. And you pop your ski rubber out, and you you jam the shim in, and you put it back in, and boom, you know, big improvement. So nice, nice, awesome. Thanks. This for looks like that. a deuce. This looks like a deuce skid. It it yeah. is. And, <laughs> and uh, what we were testing here was on the new R Motion X skid. Uh, remember, I mentioned the arms are a lot longer, mm -hmm. and as such, the pivot for the torsion spring is farther away from the spring clip. So, you know, now there's only one BRP Skidoo has one torsion spring option stronger than stock uh, that won't fall out of the spring clips. Um, so earlier in the tenure of this, of our investigation, we were moving the pickup farther to the back, uh, so that we had a broader range of torsion springs available to us. That, that's all that photo is showing. 
Uh, actually, nice. the uh, the other thing a clever eye might see is see the width difference in those two plastic spring clips. Yep. Yep. The one on our right is is the new updated one from BRP, which lasts twice as long and has less inherent friction. So mm -hmm. it's it's an update that we chuck into every sled in here. It's just a uh, they're like nine bucks and uh, and they give you a nice a nice free running uh, torsion spring. Nice. Um, so question there, I, I don't know, I thought you did answer there, but uh, Donnie's like, so how do you compensate for the left and right imbalance of 40 pounds? Oh, um, <laughs> when we, when we swap the two spring uh, forces around in the back, yeah. when we, when we took all the preload, there was 20 millimeters of preload on the center shock spring. Mm -hmm. Now there's zero. And then we put the right torsion springs in the back. We, we put it back on the scales and the two ski shocks were miraculously within two two point two pounds of each other. Wow, yeah. that's good. It, it fixed itself when we took the center shock out. It was just it was this uh, unknown fulcrum in, around the center shock was just doing whatever the hell it wanted uh, up front. And I could I could do this with my shoulders when we were on the scales and just watch the weight move around uh, on the on the front scale pad. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's wild. pretty wild. Yeah, so it, says it fixed it to to recap it fixed itself, but otherwise if we found and the new the new manufacturers I say Polaris and Skidoo are really paying attention to weight bias up front now to try and keep it balanced. Mm -hmm. Um but otherwise you would just do it with preload. You'd give the one you know, the one shock a turn more than the other to try and move weight around and balance that thing out. But we didn't need to after we were done our setup. Yeah. Bruce Stewart says his buddy's got a 2020 Renegade XRS and looking for a good torsion spring set for himself. And he's 280 to 300 pounds. What would you suggest for the spring? Uh, for that rate on a 2020 uh, is the 2.3 slash 100 torsion spring. It's a... Uh, uh, just, I know I'm sorry, I'm throwing numbers around the stock torsion spring, uh, on the, on the R motions for years and years and years and years was a 1.35 slash 80. And what those numbers mean is 1.35 Newton meters, Newton millimeters per degree of rotation. That's purely the support. If you were to put the end of the spring on a scale and measure it. And then the second number, the slash 80 number and all this is on our website too. Um, there's a there's a search criteria on our website to help guys pick the right torsion springs for Perfect. their for their weight. Uh, the second number is the degrees of preload. Mm -hmm. um, like, can you hang on a sec? I'll grab it. Yeah, absolutely, spring. absolutely, oh, absolutely. Yep. Oh, this is great, isn't it? I'll tell you, this is. Pro like, I'm just saying, this is a really good information <laughs> session, man. This is. I like. I I'm getting texts saying this is awesome. Like. It, it's, the uh, I think I think we spent more more of your money, Rich. It's <laughs> all right, man. It's, yeah. Okay, okay. So hey, here, let me get big here. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. get them big. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Nice. Okay, so here is a Polaris torsion spring out of a twenty-one, and this can be don't drive your sled down a salty road and then put it away in the trailer. Oh, geez, eh? Spray yeah. it down. Worth makes a great corrosion inhibitor spray. Uh, we sell it, but anybody that has a, a an automotive worth account, uh, yeah. they've got a great spray, but be cognizant of that. The last mm -hmm. ride often in March or April, the salt's out, you're down the side of a road. Don't just yep. put the sled away. Uh, this is out of that 21, uh, 21 XC. So uh, last year's. Last year's yeah, sled. Yep. It rusted bad. So don't tell the owner. Um, <laughs> I'll tell them. But you see the degrees there, the angle, oops, the angle here. Mm -hmm. This is an 80 degree spring and you can envision that, right? Yep. That's, that's, and then if this tail were, were perfectly vertical, it would be a 90 and then we even have some 100s. So the, the smaller the angle is the more preload the spring has. So uh, a slash 100 spring has got a lot less preload than a slash 80 spring. So you'll see that in our search criteria on our website. Mm -hmm. But uh, this this torsion spring is an, it's Polaris uh, uh, Imperial manufacturer in the US is 11 pound 
uh, 80 degree spring. And so a common upgrade for us is a 13 pound 80 degree. And then they make a 13 pound 70 degree. So we keep a bunch of different springs in stock depending on how heavy the rider is or their passenger and gear to your load. That's um, cool. So, uh, <clears throat> Rich, I kind of got segued away there. What was the original? <laughs> what was the original question? Uh, you know what? What was I asking there? What What was it? He just. Oh uh, yeah, um, guy wanted to know 280, 300 pounds. Bruce, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yep. Bruce. Sorry about that. All right, it's for your buddy. So the two point three slash one hundred is the spring I would recommend for that rider. We we've got thirty pair of them in stock. Uh, we'll ship them next day. Um, we we've got a small markup over over Polar or sorry Skidoo's uh, retail price just to ship it up here. Mm -hmm. But we'll we'll put it in your hands and walk you through tuning it. So that's the spring that I would use. So the 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 two point three is the rate. The stock rate was a one point three five, and then in twenty twenty the stock rate I think was a one point five. Uh, which was still way too soft. And your buddy at 280 to 300 pounds, um, if he's that weight all by himself, he would run a pair of those 2.3s uh, torsion springs for sure. That's great. Thanks for answering that. that. Yeah. Yeah. But again, on our website, there's uh, there's uh, for, you know, so that we don't have to answer that question for 60 different uh, applications. Yeah, yeah, people asking the question. Yeah. Just go to the website. Yeah. Type in. Yeah. I've got, awesome. um, in, in snowmobile pro, snowmobile products tab, mm -hmm. um, you can there's one tab for torsion springs and another tab for R Motion X torsion springs. But we've got uh, criteria there for every different weight caliber to to uh, to help you pick a torsion spring for all and the it, manufacturers as well. Eh, John, right? Uh, yeah, it's. Yep. It, I think so. It's, okay. it's, okay. we've got the most information for Skidoo just because um, yeah. of volume and, and, and it, it's funny that the dealers are aware, well, a lot of dealers, parts guys are aware of two springs the yes. stock one and the one they call the big boy spring, <laughs> uh, which is just the, the stock spring from the uh, Grand Touring, yeah, is, is a 1.6680. So yeah. it's a pretty pretty healthy upgrade over the one three five, mm -hmm. but now the R Motion X skid has come out. It blows those springs out of the water. Yeah. They don't. They're not enough for your daughter, kind of thing. Yeah. See, my buddy on his X on his VR one last year, he had to go backwards. He had to go to the lighter spring, the lightest spring, because the, the the stock one, the medium one, was too too stiff for him. I mean, he's a smaller, lighter guy, right? So yeah. 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 I'd, I'd be, I'd want to have a chat with them um, okay. uh, to, to confirm that a lot of times see uh, there, the center shock is doing too much of the work, right? Oh, okay. Before we do sags, we'll do sags for fun. And mm -hmm. then we reach in and we take all the preload off the center shock and do sags again. Okay. And we find that that damn center shock is supporting too much of the load. Um, so it oh, might okay. be erroneously supporting uh, the rider when it shouldn't be so so maybe not switch out his his torsion spring this year work on the center shock get the center shock out of the equation yeah go go full full light on the torsion on the uh, sorry on the preload of that center shock and the sled will start to handle like it's on rails and then you actually need to reevaluate is it squatting too much onto the okay. rear onto the rear of the skid um which now we kind of we we think oh what about compression damping um and so now we can divide that up into is it squatting too much or is it squatting too quickly mm -hmm. and that's you know one is the springs and the other one is the shock right yeah now will that make a difference john so he he, he was on the vr1 last year which was kind of the trail sled and now he's going to the xcr this year like i said he's not a heavy guy he's at like a buck 65 yeah. So that's why he was finding it was it was way too stiff. So he went to a lighter torsion spring, and it, it, he said it seemed to have helped him. But but yeah, now he's going yeah. to the XCR this year. So yeah, the XCR um, ski springs and center springs are a lot stronger than mm -hmm. the XC uh, chassis. I think they're just they're calibrating it for a, a bigger bump expectation rider kind of thing. Okay. So um the you know we joke that the tape measure doesn't lie right um, <laughs> top the back of the sled up measure the 
measure go from the rear axle up to the uh, the bar on the sled yeah. um and you know take a reference number it'll be something like 17 inches and then when he hops on and assumes a riding position it should be 14 you know like three inches less okay. but, but again we put the sled on dolly so that it's not erroneously sitting high you know just think of an atv you know if you jack an atv or a side by side off the ground and then set it down it's going to hang high until you scrub the tires out right mm -hmm. yeah. because the friction of the tires will hold the vehicle up so when we're doing a setup on an atv or a side by side we make sure to put it in neutral even when the when we put people in it and then we we pull the thing back and forth a few feet and you watch the thing kind of roar and then it then it gives you an accurate ride height right so yeah. you can you have to do it right um and uh, again on on you on our youtube i don't know that we officially have a youtube channel but we've <laughs> we've saved some videos there and we we did a video on how to do sag with a tape measure and then how to do sag using our mo tool uh, uh measuring tool and in one of the previous photos gary you showed uh yeah we didn't talk about it, but you could see a little yellow box stuck on the back axle, and it had a it had a um, a cable going up to the bumper, and we were using that tool. I use that tool like six times a day. One back a couple more. That one there, right there. there, 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 there. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, you can just. I remember see it seeing there. that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, that yeah. So that's that's reading. That's purely a tape measure but it, it Bluetooths to my phone and I can read it. So I sit, I can do oh, sags nice. at night by myself, right? Nice. With all my phones. That's cool. Yeah, it is. Really That's cool. cool. So John, sorry to, I just want to ask this. So when you're checking sag, you're saying you put them on dollies, like two, yes. one in the front. Okay. So one in the front, one in the back kind of center. Well, two in the front, one under each ski, right? Yep. And they, they've got to be the kind, like I use the Koala pieces that the, they have full casters on all four. Yep. They're a bugger to push around because they want to go all over the place. Anywhere, but, yeah. But uh, that, that'll allow the skis to scrub out left to right, and it'll also allow the skis to scrub away from the skid when the rider gets on. So it's giving you – there's no friction uh, hang-up in when you use four dollies. Yeah. So nice. that's that's how we check sag as accurately as we know how. So. That's good to know. A, a, a couple of things, just cleaning up here. Uh, don't – uh, someone said they can't find the search on the website. Travis Brim said that. Yeah, can't Travis. Find... I was afraid yeah. of that. Um, in my free time, which I struggle to find, uh, we're, we're redoing our website like right now. And uh, we're, we're going e-commerce on it. Um, and because we, last year we found we were getting hundreds of phone calls. I'm 240 pounds. What torsion springs do I run? And <laughs> My poor girls were just like a tape recorder, right? <laughs> and uh, so we thought we got to get that on information on the website. It's not rocket science. And I'd love it if the guys could sit in bed like I do at 11 o'clock at night on my phone and buy it, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was the whole the whole driver. So the site, uh, the snowmobile products uh, section on the site might be down like right today as my guys are working on that. But uh, be patient, visit it in, in the next couple of days, and, and there's a plethora of information on there. Okay. And now Skidoo 600R says, uh, I have a 22 Renegade X. How do I pick a torsion spring for an R-Motion X if you ride with the passenger some of the time? Is there a solution for that? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Um, so, you know, we answer that question 12 months of the year, right? And, and uh, you know, BMW motorcycle rider, he might come in and say, hey, my wife gets on once a year. But when she does, we go to Vancouver, right? So it's how important is the setup for that passenger? Um, because it's a big ask for one torsion spring to span that kind of a weight discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying 600 R's partner is, is heavy, but the farther they are back from the center of yeah, the PG of the machine, the more exaggerated their weight is in terms like just like a torque wrench, right? The farther away you hold the handle, the more you can lean on that wrench. So we just have to accurately uh 22 renegade um did yep. he, X. 
Yep. Does he say his weight? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Okay. You weight. know what? No, if you contact John tomorrow and, yeah. and someone yeah. there can help. Oh, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 10, 10 calls a day. We can, we yeah, can yeah. guide, uh, we can guide uh, Skidoo 600 R to, to the right spring for sure. So. Yeah. Uh, just as a, as a FYI, um, um, who was that that, that sent that Skidoo 600 R? Uh, yeah. Neil Orton, who's who was in the chat, he might still be in there. He actually outfitted his 600 R, so he might be able to give you some insight as well. Uh, John actually worked on it. Yeah. So basically, the that's where preload comes in, right? We try to we try to provide the torsion spring here in the shop to hit just under three inches of sag when you're in here in your street clothes, right? So that when you put your helmet on and your boots, and your coat and your, your pants, you're close to three inches of sag and on position one on your preload, that's our goal. So then as snow accumulates in the tunnel and you put your fuel caddy on the back or your wife gets on back, you now have four more options on preload for skidoo and, and two for Cat and, and Polaris and Yamaha, they have a three position cam. Yep. Unless you go to Yamaha's uh, website and you can buy a five position cam. But um, yeah, that, that's what those other four positions are for is to accommodate for the weight behind greater, greater load in the back okay. uh, accumulating. And not just passenger and gear load, but snow accumulation as well. Mm -hmm. So, John, you, you me mentioned and I know this is probably a question loaded with how busy you are in the shop um, about people sending out their shocks to you for being, you know, you know, to get service. But if I wanted to bring my sled to you, like you guys, you've got smart guys behind you bringing your sleds in now on average, like how long, like a week, two weeks? Uh, no, we, we do. We try not for a variety of reasons. We try not to keep people's sleds here for very long at all. Okay. And uh, a lot of the guys are coming from, we had a gentleman come from Sarnia. Um, we've had Americans bring their sleds for setup. So a lot of these, if we pre-plan the visit, we can do it same, same day. Oh, that's, um, that's our goal. Now awesome. they, they may say, Hey, can you service all four shocks, go dual rate on the ski limiter strap and the right torsion springs. That is a common, 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 uh, work order for us here and when we're servicing all four shocks that that's uh it's here a couple of days so okay okay yeah. yeah um my buddy kirk chimed in there and said john explain the ability to run different torsion positions i'm just moving the chat oh, yeah, on either side of yes the yeah, yeah 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 on each side yep Sorry, uh, you know okay kurt kurt's made an excellent point um and when you read through the uh, search criteria on on my website, especially for the R Motion X, you will see we are big advocates of running different rate torsion springs left and right. And that is allowing us to hit the middle, hmm. right? Um, for example, uh, an example here is, is you, you've got the same torsion springs in the back of the skid left and right, and we're shooting for three inches of sag, right? And let's say you're at two and a half and you, you throw them one cam position and they go to three and a half. Well, why don't you just adjust one and not the other? And people will go, oh my God, the sled will turn left more than it turns right. It's like, no. The, the skid is bolted in in four positions into the tunnel. So they are sharing responsibility, the two torsion springs. So you're very welcome to run one on position one and the other one on position two or three or four. So the, of that. it nets out the support. And on that same vein, you can run two different torsion spring rates in the skid and it'll just average the result. We do it all the time. And for the people that get their backs up, it's like, oh yeah, motocross bikes. There's a spring in one fork and there's no spring in the other fork. How does that work? Well, do you, do you always ride with your front axle in place? Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Well, of course, right? <laughs> so when the axle's in place and the pinch bolts are locked in, it is one system with, with the two forks. They average each other out. Nowadays, they call separate function forks. There's compression in one leg, rebound in the other leg. There's air in one leg, a damping cartridge in the other. So this is not new. Um, 
Yes, if you miked the bushings after 100,000 kilometers, you might find a few thou on one side that was running a stronger torsion spring, but it is completely yeah, you know, it is it is yeah. nothing. You're picking the fly shit out of the pepper with that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> it allows us so much more tuning accuracy to yeah. to be able to to recognize that we can mix preloads and mix spring rates on a snowmobile. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so what are we looking at here, John? Oh, okay. Looks like a ski. It looks yeah. like it a ski being shaved down. It is a CNA Pro ski uh, that was, was I inherited these skis, and uh, I've reached out to CNA Engineering three or four times, and they, they won't call me back. Uh, I wanted to talk to them about the design of this ski in particular, and when I looked at that ski, there was way more keel ahead of the spindle than behind it, right? And mm -hmm. remember our conversation about Bergstrom shims. That thing darted like crazy, and I couldn't get it out. Um, and so I went into the milling machine and the surface grinder, and I was changing the keel. Um, and I, I made a pretty dramatic improvement. Um, but that ski is no longer offered from CNA. It's disappeared. So I just wanted to chat with their engineers to say, hey, what what, what was going on with that ski? Right. What happened to it? Where did it go and why? I kind of wanted to hear them echo my experience. Your feedback, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but they're yeah. pretty busy, I guess. So That's pretty well, yeah. though. Donnie says, uh, you want to read that one out, Rich, that I put yeah. up on the screen there? Yeah. On the skid, there are multiple mounting holes for the spring clip. Does moving the mount point of the spring clip make any significant change in the spring performance? Uh, well, I think to touch on Donnie's point, I don't think it's their intention to move that spring clip position. I think it's part aesthetics and part keeping the weight of the rail down in unimportant places. But to to touch on Donnie's thought process, we've done the same thing and we've moved the spring position pickup forward and back. And we found some interesting things. It doesn't change the spring rate and it doesn't seem to change the preload or the sag. Mm -hmm. But what it does change is the force on the front of the skid in terms of its relationship to the snow. The farther ahead towards the front of the skid you move the spring pickup, it acts like the center shock spring is stronger. And conversely, if you move the spring pickup farther back towards the back of the snowmobile, there's less effective downforce on the front of the skid to okay. into the snow. Yeah. That's that's what we've found. Mm -hmm. uh, you're some you're limited by other factors. The the bolt from the front arm is in the way. Um, and then if you, if you, if we've taken preload out of the spring, as we've played with preload, uh, by drilling different mount holes, there's one of my, one of my R motion skids was a plethora of holes in the rail as we were testing this. Uh, <laughs> and you've got to watch, it can stab the track pretty quick yeah, and it yes. can also stab on the R motion X. Um, it can stab the, uh, there's a, there's a wheel support on the outside of the rail that this torsion spring will stab if you're not careful. Okay. Look at how well, much he's shaving off the ski here, Rich. Yeah. It's see, that's amazing though. Like, see if I was CNA, I mean, I know they're a big company. I would be appreciating the feedback that you you're, you're given like and interesting to say, John, why did that ski disappear? Probably because of that design. I think yeah, so. Probably um, handled yeah. like shit. Yeah, and exactly. Between you and me and the three other people that are watching tonight, uh, <laughs> I was I was just hoping to hear from them. Yeah, that yeah. ski was a challenge, yeah. and we 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 put it in the circular bin and we came out with the XPT, and yeah. and I would have given that guy two thumbs up and and placed my order, but nice. you know I I called them several times and couldn't get a call back. So that's too and, bad. Yeah, I just. I don't have time to chase, you know, no, so, and you, no. nor should you, I mean, especially when you're right. reaching out and if someone there knew what was going on, they would have been, Hey, let's talk to this, this fellow. He knows what he's doing. Right. So, so you, Ryan, you tried to help yeah. Yeah, Ryan, if you're watching, give me a call. I'd like to talk to you about that. Ski. <laughs> <laughs> I took That's a pile awesome. of measurements on, on where the keel was centered in relationship to the spindle bolt. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've often thought about moving the spindle bolt back and forth to mimic that Bergstrom effect a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll cross yeah, that cool. bridge when we get there. So. Excellent. What are we looking this at thing here, is Gary? a beast. This is awesome. Like, look at the hood on it. That's nice. That is wicked. Yeah. I love the map black. The vents and the, and the panels all vented. Pretty so, cool. What are we looking at here, John? That is Mark Wilkins. He is one of my test riders. Um, he is the current world champion for Hyundai motor cars for their uh, U.S. Uh, national road program. Wow. Um, he's a genius and a gifted driver. Um, and and there's a, a core three people on my team, and and uh, Mark is one of them. You'll see him um, in uh, in a lot of our snowmobiler TV videos. Yeah, I was just gonna say that's where I recognize him from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's uh, he's just an unbelievable driver and uh, uh, smart, and he he he's so good to work with. So many people will come in and take their helmet off. Oh, that sled shit, you know. Or and uh, but but Mark will he and I will sit down and, and go over pros and cons. Um, if you zoom in on that ski shock, you'll see probably a triple rate um, ski package. Uh, with, um, with, uh, you know, which he allows even lower ride height to the front a arms and, um, and more. And now the, the spring has two support rise steps through its travel, not just one. Um, and the dual rate, excuse me, gives us two, two pressure rises in the ski support. And then that gives us three and, uh, our friends at high gear, uh, have supplied, um, adjustable crossover so we get to pick when the when the shock goes from its its light to its strong strategy there so but um, I'm just very proud of my relationship with Mark and and how much he brings to our our testing program um, and uh, that was a shot of his machine that uh, he brings to me every year for uh, tune review and uh, and service so. that's awesome nice Beautiful. Now is it a stock skidoo spindle? I'm I'm looking at it. Is it? It just looks different from here. It know. is. It's that's oh, okay. his that's uh that sled is his um X X S. Um oh, okay. it's his previous it's an it's not, not okay. a gen four. Oh okay. no, it's an XS chassis, yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. and he does have he's now has an 850 Gen 4 and has since sold that to uh, another buddy of mine. Um but yeah, that sled is nigh on untouchable in the trails. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. All the different testing. Eh? I like yeah. the micrometer behind. Look at that. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that is uh, where we're in. You one. I think uh, Gary asked about this earlier about our dual rate springs on the X package, and that's what you're looking at there. That's standard uh, X package adrenaline uh, TNT shock absorber, um, and uh, and we're we're developing crossovers. That mm -hmm. white piece in between the two, yep. the tender and the mainspring, okay. we're, we're developing that to get that ride height down and give a rising support. And in that photo, you can see the you can see a little gap between the top of the white crossover and the bottom of the gray preload adjuster. See that right there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see there's what maybe four threads showing there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So if you were to imagine me pushing down on the front bumper that white crossover would, would in about an inch worth of suspension travel, um, bottom out or ski right travel, there. not, yeah, it would bottom out yeah. and get stronger. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Wild. That actually yeah. looks like a TNT shock, not even an X package shock. Pro probably. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 And you see, see the fat, the, the reason for the fat white material between the tender and the mainspring. Yeah. What, what I'm doing there is making up for length and, and hitting a target length. Because when you wind the preload on those shocks up to zero, mm -hmm. right, and they stop, they lock, they hit a lock, there's still 10 millimeters of preload on that spring. And we don't want that. That, that sled is still sitting up too high. So I've, I've chosen a pair of Elka springs See the numbers there, 2.5 X 200. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2.5 is the rate mm -hmm. in in kilograms per millimeter. 
then 200 is the length. And then see the spring above, it looks like a 5.4 five, 5 yeah. by 52 or by 40, I think it is. 45, it says, yeah. yeah. 45. Yeah. So that's the rate of the tender spring and the length. So now when I put those two together, I've, I've calculated the thickness of that white crossover so that I can go to zero preload, right? So now when, they, when the owner goes to full minimum, mm -hmm. it now doesn't have 10 mils of preload on it. It's got zero Front bumper comes down, handling mm -hmm. improves, roll center reduces, right? Yeah, yeah. those are X-package shocks right there. Those are the yeah. X-package KYBs. Yeah. And then nice can, job, John. That's yeah. awesome. You those spring sleeves, our, John, are they just PVC? Is that they are, is it special we've, plastics? We've tested, um, we've tested a few materials, mm -hmm. and those were a combination of cold temperature, low friction, mm -hmm. and easiest to machine. Oh, nice. So Which, for adjusting it, for you when you're, when you're trying out your different settings, right? Yeah. 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 Well, yes, because we, mach we take that spring uh, crossover and I, I take one millimeter out of the inside bore for a uh, Walker Evans. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm machining those to do Walker Evans, but, but my supplier at the time, we were testing several materials in terms of friction and uh, and that was the easiest for him to machine uh, from raw material. So, un unfort well, not unfortunately, it was still my favorite pick in terms of friction, um, and it was his favorite pick in terms of being able to machine it to the tight tolerances that I wanted. So. Okay, that's pretty wild. Nice. Really and neat. you can see beside it the uh, the oh. elk the, the or the center shock. Um, yeah, that's you've done yeah. the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And you see how that crossover is black? Yes. Yep. That's that's a, a leftover Elka uh, material. Mm -hmm. um, but I've since replaced that with one of my own as well. So nice. Frankenstein in them. Are yeah. <laughs> Tested. This, these are like a thing of There's beauty here. You, it'd yeah. be a shame to put them on a snowmobile. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, um, those are a set of obviously QS3. I think they're just QS3s. I don't see rebound on the bottom behind your shoulder mm -hmm. there, Gary. Um, the mountain maybe, guys love these there shocks. It is. Hey, John. It is. QS3R. It is yeah. 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 So that's a beautiful, that's a really good shock at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. The mountain guys swear by them. They love them. Yeah. They yeah. all order them. Yeah. Yeah. They're, a, they're a nice shock absorber. Yeah. Again, we, we tune the, um, we tune the, uh, the three settings. Mm -hmm. um, we don't love the ones that Fox settled on, but we, with our experience, we we modify them and change them. So they work really, really good. That's awesome. We got a lot of it. This has been the most. I think this out of all the shows so far, Gary, this has been the most active. It's awesome. Well, that's good. I'm I'm yeah. Hope we're help, I'm hope we're really helping good. out. You got a, a lot of people in here. Mike just said awesome show tonight. Uh, before tonight's show, I was thinking of calling John. Now I'll call for sure. <laughs> so that's good and we're, I'm getting a lot of cool. we're getting a lot of seeing a lot of yeah. comments like that so it's good I've learned a lot man <laughs> that's great really well good that's job. that's one of the our favorite things is is yeah we can give you some product but if we can give you some education that's where the true value lies you know and For sure and explaining why we've taken your money and given you this you know gizmo and promising mm -hmm. you that it's going to work so good and it's going to make your snowmobile so much safer. And, uh, you know, I keep circling back to that word uh, safe and, and really that's what it's all about. You know, yes, I've been known to, I tell my wife, I'm sorry, the throttle stuck, sweetheart. I don't know what happened, um, <laughs> but, but it all comes back to uh, being safe. And if we can stay on our side of the trail and with a big smile on our face, we're going to come home at the end of the day, right? So Yeah, yeah. No, that's good, man. That's been really good. Good information session for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All cool. Right. Was there any other questions that uh, you saw in the chat uh, that we didn't touch on? Uh, I don't think I don't think I missed anything. I know I missed a couple there. Sorry about that. Let's see. Well, you answered uh, center preload. We answered that one. Uh, no, I think that was it. Uh, cool. Unless I've missed anything, Gary. You seen it? I don't think so. I think I think we've answered pretty much. Daniel Ray Raymaker. What did he ask there? 
Yeah, ask him if there's any shocks for a 2000 oh, something. Yeah. Why was that down here? Oh, yeah. Gary, can you ask him if there's shocks for a 2000 Polaris 600 XCSP? That's a um, pretty old sled, right? Ski know. shocks, no problem. But uh, center and rear, we'd have to engineer them. And uh, often the price um, that that isn't there. worth the, uh, you know, people will kind of get cold feet when I talk four digits, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and they, you know, that yeah. you got to ask yourself: Is a sled a keeper? Is it worth putting a couple grand into it? Well, now that it's COVID, that's a twelve thousand dollars snowmobile, right? So yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, and that's a good point, right? Because we were saying, John, we were mentioning that uh, uh, you know those sleds back then, unfortunately, they weren't even rebuildable; they were throwaways, right? Yeah. You, you build them, and the, and the price, the price point back twenty years ago was a lot cheaper than that. And like you said, you know, unless it's a mint collector sled, but not most times, nine times out of 10, it's not right. You're not going to, you're not going to put the money into it. So. Yeah. So we have those, those hard discussions with people that want us to uh, create or, or, or look at or replace um, old snowmobiles. And, and, you know, I have some customers that, uh, that one gentleman had a, um, a Yamaha grand or a big touring Yamaha. The venture. Yes, and it was yeah. it was older, but the thing was mint. It had like yeah. a thousand kilometers on it, and he said, "No, build me a shock," and and I don't, you know, within reason, I don't care what it costs, and yeah, yeah. you know. So then it was, you know, like a fourteen hundred dollar shock or something at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got him a spring solution, and him and his wife were just super super happy. Yeah. Well, and that's you get you get some people that, that don't want to keep, you know, trading up and that. It's like I've got some friends the same thing. They got an old truck and they love it and yeah. they'll dump some money into it. So, anyway, sorry Gary, what do we got going on here? No, nope, can't hear you now, but perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Gary, Gary rolled on to a new photo here of a, a yeah. ZR Articat. Yeah. Nice um, wrap. Yeah, it was real. We've seen some beautiful sleds in our shop. It's yeah, we're so fortunate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was just a gentleman that was just tickled after we did our thing and explained to him what we do and how to tune it. it it's neat to see guys in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s mm -hmm. um, have never had this discussion and training on this level of snowmobile. And yeah. you can tell they're just like, oh man, I can't wait for the snow and start tinkering with this thing because now I understand what's uh, what's going on. So yeah, it is awesome, and I and like I said, I've watched a few of your show episodes on on STV with Jeff and that, and they've been amazing. And every time I see someone, you know, you had a, an episode there where a fellow and his wife came to you and you, and you worked on, and it's just seeing the differences, you know, after the adjustability and seeing how much they love their sled after you know, getting it set up for them. It's amazing. And it makes a huge difference when you're out there enjoying it, you know, especially yeah. if it's been a harsh, right? A, a harsh right. ride. Yeah. We had, we had one, uh, one lady, um, she brought in her Polaris and, uh, it was one of the pro rush, uh, rear, rear skids. And she had a back injury and she rolled it in here and I, I'm looking at the floor in front of me cause it was sitting right here. And you couldn't even get your fist between the running board and the ground. And, and she says, I hate this thing. I'm going to quit snowmobiling. Yeah. And every one of her well-minded friends said, oh, if you want the ride softer, take preload out of it. And so she'd taken a sled that had 12 inches of travel and it had one left. Oh, it was one Lord. inch from the bumper. And the poor girl would go over anything bigger than a twig and it would bottom and just ram her spine. Oh, yeah. So they, they put in softer springs and they'd taken all the preload out of it and they'd open the compression damping on the shock so that it bottomed constantly, by the way. Jeez. And uh, so, yeah, we, we said, did you keep the stock spring? Because yeah. she was 140 pounds and the stock spring was right. right. And we put it back in and we lifted it up like 10 inches and, and the thing we took the back, well, not the bumper, because you can't push on the back bumper, those sled, but you push on the seat yeah. and it was just a pillow. And we revalved the shock to quicken the rebound and gave it back to her. And she was just about in tears. She was so happy. That's awesome. And, and this was in November. She knew it was going to work. 
right? That's awesome. That's awesome. So it's so a- neat when we save somebody's day like that. Right. And, uh, yeah. You, yeah. you wish that that could pay the bill and you didn't have to charge them, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, that's the thing. If you watch in the summer sessions episode, Andy's, uh, pr- his son's a, going pro in motocross this year he's he was touching the pro circuit a little bit this season and he said the very first upgrade you do is a suspension before you touch the motor because he goes you have to be able to handle the the bike that has to handle the the hard bumps and stuff before you can go fast on them you know some of the some of the hardest core fastest riders on my on my team bone stock motor they, yeah. they won't touch it. They, yep. they said, when I'm, when I'm 200 kilometers from the nearest town and I got my throttle into it, I don't want that thing to blow up right. or run lean or be annoying people because of the loud exhaust, mm-hmm. you know, stealth mode, you know, yep. that there's so, so, so much to be gained with getting that 160, 180, 140 horse to the snow before you ask for more. Uh, that's just worsening the problem. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, we look at super bikes and deal with wheel spin. And when that tire starts to spin, uh, it doesn't have a chance of hooking up if it's spinning at 60 kilometers an hour above ground speed. It's when it's spinning at five kilometers an hour better than ground speed is when it's got a chance of hooking up. So, you know, power isn't, isn't everything getting it using what you got, you know, I say that, you know, I'm not talking drag and, and sure there's power is, is king in a lot of aspects of motorsports, but uh, that's not what we're focusing on here. No, no, that's right. What are we looking at here? It looks like you've got some slider material, high fax material there. So that's a set of Bergstrom's and that's one portion of the Bergstrom carbide install that we didn't talk about. Free with every set is what they call that ski saver. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's a piece of uh, hydrometer poly that is protecting the carbide. And look at how worn that ski is under that. Underneath, yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. If yeah. that guy had a, had a set of those two years ago, he'd have a good looking ski. But but it also adds to the side profile and support of the of the carbide, so that when you turn the bars, there's a bit more. Uh, bit more surface area there to bite into the snow yeah it's almost like a shaper bar but it's it's made of the the plastic right yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. And yeah. And how, do, do, does that make you get away with a shorter one or do you still recommend going long like i think uh, well i i still go eight inch i still go mm-hmm. long you know for yeah. it's good the carbide's going to last longer it always does and uh it's going to be there when i turn the bars so um yeah, yeah. And, and my sleds don't you know, because of what we know, uh, I, I don't have high steering effort. You know, we could, we could have a show on handlebar effort. I know. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. yeah. You know? I think we're going to have yeah. to have you back. Like seriously, yeah, sure. there's, there's so much information that you can offer here. And oh, yeah. I want, yeah. I want John back after the mock, after the mock and XRS or smart shocks comes out and he has yeah. a chance to tinker with them. Cause there's a lot of questions on that tonight. And I think, it, I think it, the value you could get for our audience on on that topic alone uh would be amazing yeah we've got a a, i've got word out to a few of my good customers to 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 you know hey when you when you get that sled you know bring it in here i'm dying to have a look at it yeah nice yeah Yeah. this this photo here is showing the ski tipped up from the bergstrom uh insert there you go yeah nice nice that's what you're talking about there you go yeah so yes, when you when you put that sled on the ground, the ski sits flat and it's invisible, but you can tell where the pressure is, right? It's at the back back yeah. of the carbide, not at the front of the carbide. That's nothing. My 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 1980 motor or a ski do or sorry Yamaha Exciter 440 would do that when I hit a jump. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a 1980 Moto Ski Mirage 2 special out in the yard that uh, was my first sled and. And if I ever win the lottery, that thing's coming in and I'm going to rebuild it. So nice. <laughs> nice. 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 Awesome. Yeah. It makes a difference. Those, yeah. those skis. Uh, oh, here's your factory grease you're talking about. What? Yeah. yeah. They don't waste any money on grease. You know, it's true. I've heard that. They say that on everything that 
Oh man, look at uh, that. I challenge our anybody watching tonight, pull the center shaft out of the center shock and look at it. If you think yours doesn't look like that, you haven't had enough to drink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you can in some of the older ones, you're not going to get it out. No. No, it'll be seized. Oh. Yeah. yeah you're right, Gray. Yeah. Yes, a lot of it's cosmetic. But the poor shock, you can just see under the X and the R. You oh, can you see right you, there. You there. The, yep. the poor it's shock, there. poor yeah. shock's trying to rotate on that. Yeah. 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 Now, and you're and, contaminating everything every time. It can be like, it's wow. like it's like it took yeah. its wedding ring off to go to the bar or something. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we get a super, super common uh, phone call. It's like, hey, my shocks are blown. Yeah. I push down on my back bumper and it doesn't come back up. And I said, well, your shocks probably could use the service, but that's <laughs> not what's going on. You know, I, could grease, yeah. Yeah. You, you, I guess we don't spend enough on these sleds to get more than two grease fittings, but I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll have to give a shout out to my buddy Val from Mainway. And those of you guys that frequent do talk probably know him. But uh, he's got kits that change every pivot point out on a, on a skidoo sled, and he's grown to Arctic Cat and Yamaha, um, and I think he's working on Polaris and puts a grease fitting in it. So okay, um, nice. So yeah, you, we get two grease fittings and a brand new twenty thousand dollars snowmobile. Right. And when when I was done with my twenty eighteen before I sold it, it had twenty four grease fittings. Wow. <laughs> So and hey, the Falcon, the Falcon says uh, hey accelerated. I have a 15 Apex XTX with a star suspension kit. Anything you recommend for those? Thinking of bringing it to you to adjust it to my weight. Yeah, um, yeah. we've we've we actually did a couple of those star suspension installs last year because the XTX we could not get strong enough springs for it. Mm -hmm. um, so. The combination of one rate up stronger on the, I think the XTX runs a torsion spring. It's not a coilover because um, it's a four shock skid. The, the combo of that, of that kit and stronger torsion springs was a game changer for that snowmobile. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, but we found in the installation of that star kit, it's a beautiful kit but there's a couple opportunities for interference during the installation. And Matt, my tech that installed them said, oh yeah, I had to take this shaft and go into the lathe and take 10 thou off it. And then it freed right up. So that would be one thing that I want to visit with that uh, customer is just make sure the star suspension is, is operating to its potential. Look at that. Nice. Look how dry that is. And yeah, you can see the like, rust inside what, the. What does yeah. it take to put a grease circ on that? Right. Yeah. Uh, about four bucks, but. Like, like, yeah. And that's the thing. Times how many? Like you said, John, you added twenty-five of them. Charge me the hundred bucks, man. Please just put grease fittings on my. Yeah. yeah. This I looks like just... this looks like my old sled without the idler wheels on it. <laughs> and and Another that sled, off. that sled had like five hundred kilometers on it. Oh, it was crazy. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. The Falcon's going to call you to set up an appointment. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I'd awesome. love to hear that. Yeah. Tell them that Gary and Rich sent you. Yeah. <laughs> Even though he's on the show with us tonight, right? <laughs> Gary and sent, Rich sent me. You might not want to say that, though. That might be the. Yeah. You might get charged you might more. Get charged more. <laughs> well, hey, hey, Rich, what's that new suspension you've got on there? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I awesome. call it the Falcon. <laughs> oh man so this photo i think is just uh i was just doing an install uh putting um elka's we've got you know some great customers like neil owen is one of them that uh we put in elka's every year they've 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 tasted the kool-aid they've sniffed the they've sniffed it and <laughs> and i apologize because once you've had really really good stuff you're screwed you've got to have it for life <laughs> yeah, you know, for sure. He it's, said uh, that, right? Neil Neil says that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, but just and then you get onto a sled with stock suspension, and you're just, you yeah. know, yeah. your smile yeah. turns upside down, and you go, "Oh man, it could yeah. be so much better." 
I plan on keeping my XCR for a few years. So, oh, come probably... on. You said that about your assault. <laughs> <laughs> the last two assaults, right? <laughs> yeah, that's his no. story, and he's sticking to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, this was uh, my wife, Jen. She does all our spring calibration in house, uh, matching the, the, the main spring, the tender spring, and the crossover height to, uh, to, the, to the customer, right? Nice. She'll yell at me uh, all the, uh, she'll ask me all the time. Okay. You know, Dave is uh, to yell out his weight and, and I'll remind her, I don't care for ski springs. And, uh, but then, then we talk about the application is, you know, we joke is, is the guy come in with his monster energy cap on sideways or is he an older guy that's uh, that wants some safety or comfort and then we pick the height of the crossover so that we can control when the shock goes from its soft um, strategy to its anti-bottoming strong strategy. And uh, Elka, we have four different crossover heights to, to, to best pick that. So yeah. she's uh, she's smiling, but when this shipment Elkas came in, she knew she had some work ahead of her. So. That's cool. And for, for us Newfoundlanders watching the show, she does the spring stuff in the summer as well. <laughs> awesome. Yes, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so in this photo, this is how I decided to measure uh, limiter strap length. I call it RRH in my notes or rail ride height. Uh, I rest a ruler on the front of that rail bumper. And then I bring my eyeball up until I gun sight from one running board to the other. Oh, nice. And, and then you just read it in millimeters. Um, stock, they're around 100. And the XRS is like 117. An X package is around 107. Um, a Polaris is around uh, 90, I think. Um, and then as, so when we finish a setup, we'll often target a rail ride height and the adjustable limiter strap uh, again allows us to hit a millimeter. We're not, generally most limiter strap holes when you move up, they're in 10 millimeter increments. So they're big, they're big, big steps. And the uh, adjustable strap allows us to, uh, to fine tune it. So uh, uh, we talked earlier about setting the rail, or sorry, the, the A-arm height, I'm trying to look at my monitor, the A-arm height so that we get the front preload flat. We set the back preload to keep us at three, three and a half inches. And then we set the uh, the limiter strap up front. And that um, allows us to, uh, to to know if the guy's calling me from the UP of Michigan, I, I can tell him how his sled's going to handle by where he sets that uh, limiter strap. Nice. That's Perfect. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Ooh, KYB. Yep. I might just get some accelerated stickers to put on. The put them on. <laughs> <laughs> They're expensive, that... but they help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't add horsepower, they add travel. Right. Yeah. You know, you have to have the power mod sticker on the hood. And yeah. That's for your horsepower. And then you, yeah. you got the accelerated yeah. for the shocks. Yeah. But right above your microphone in that photo, Gary. You see the torque arm coming out of the coming out of the bolt there on the rear. Oh right, no, back well, out a bit, right there, but yeah. Well, yeah, up above, above up, yeah. go up, up, Not and then right there. The right. Yep, see there the red go. grease up. Go up the top part of that part, Gary, right above your head. Yeah. Right there, right there. Right there. Yeah. See, we've sprayed red grease. That is a big pivot point for friction. Really, eh? nobody ever greases that poor thing. Um, <laughs> poor thing, <laughs> you must see a lot of damage, eh, John? Like, just like, oh my gosh, it's so overlooked. Rich, I one know. of the worst things I saw happen to a good friend of mine, um, G Jim. I won't mention his last name, but but president of the uh, one of our local snowmobile club. Um, see right above the fast track, the track, the spring guide there. Yeah. Yep. Um, through neglect and lack of maintenance, the torsion spring rusts there, right? Because it mm -hmm. rubs the paint off in about 300 kilometers. 
Yep. Yep. And then that spring steel, it'll rust overnight. Right. And now rusty steel acts as a file, right? Oh, yeah. And it carved and carved and carved away over eight years of no maintenance. Somebody changed his track for him last year, put a brand new track on it. And his first ride out, the spring finished sawing its way through that clip, stabbed the track and cut it in half. Oh, oh my geez. Lord. And you think when you pull the track out, you do all that, right? Like yeah, I mean, after years, but that, I know I get it. Yeah. That, a clip buddy, right? is, <laughs> that clip, I know because we buy 20, 30 of them at a time from Gateway is $9.99. Yeah. And that's something. Eh? And I think that's after me adding a buck to it. Um, <laughs> but Jim's poor bill was like 1400 bucks because oh. he needed a, he needed a track. Yeah. And then the full skid drive shaft had to come out Dang, chain everything. case, you know, yeah. over a nine a nine dollar spring clip. So crazy, crazy. That's amazing. Anyway, I'm just I'm just shouting off here as I no, good point. things no, I catch mean, my eye. But yeah. but we say after you're done lubricating your grease pivots, uh, wipe the grease off and smear it on the bottom of the torsion spring where it goes into that clip. And the ride quality and comfort will improve dramatically. Yep. Um, and uh, and again, if the sled is a keeper, um, visit Mainway's website and order up, and we do it here, uh, order up some grease fitting um, kits to do all your pivots on your sled. And the yeah. thing will ride better than brand new for the life of the machine. Wow. Yeah, right on. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he might be a good guest for you, Gary. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's chat yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah sure. he's a neat he's a neat guy and uh, is doing something uh, for the sport that uh, that makes a difference. Done. That's he's good. in. We'll book him yeah. in. Yeah. Done. Yeah. I'll tell him that you committed him to it. Cool. <laughs> he's got no choice but to. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's awesome. And then that's at? this is another shot of just a Walker Evans with our dual rate spring kit on. Nice. So. Cool. It must be jacked up right now to have that kind of A-arm angle. But angle, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, it's done. Yeah. 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 That's good, though. That's another XCR. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, I think we're, yeah, but mm -hmm. I think I'm probably taking a picture. If you zoom in on the high facts, uh, we're probably banging on a set of uh, DuPont Vespels. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, yeah, they are. See the little lines in them? Yep. So are, are they good, John? Because I've ordered them. They're Actually, they're supposed to be here in November. Oh, we got them in stock, Rich. What? Yeah. We ordered them back in... When the heck did he order them? That's June? actually Polaris. Skin, June too. or July. It is. Yeah. yeah. We. Oh, um, I didn't know you carried those. Yeah. my They're on my website when it's up and running. Okay. <laughs> um, Just yeah. don't try and search for them. Yeah, not right <laughs> now. No. Yeah. Tomorrow. Well, that's good maybe. to know. So you say, all right on. Okay. Yeah. The vest belt, I put them in every one of my sleds. Yeah. Um, they're, they're super hard durometer. So that, you know, yes, you, yes, better fuel economy. Yes. Higher top speed, less rolling resistance. Those are, those are good enough reasons. But when I'm going into North Bay and the trail's crap and I'm running down the side of a road for 20 kilometers, I'm not worried. That's it. Yeah. That if, right it's, on. if it's 25 below and I'm on the railway line from Whitney to Barry's Bay, I'm not worried. Yeah. You know, there, you know, it feels like, oh, did I leave my parking brake on? Yeah. No. And, yeah, and everybody behind you is doing one of these. Yeah. Not, not with those sliders. I yeah. heard everyone everyone says it's the best thing you can spend your money on right off the hop for a brand new sled is throw those sliders on. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah they it, it, it's funny because we see we see Yamaha and you know they they come out with some things, some you know, Yamaha and Camoplast, I think. Remember they engineered that ripsaw track together yeah. uh, years ago. And then they pioneered, I believe, this relationship with DuPont for these sliders. Okay. Um, because they had some sleds in their fleet that were hard on sliders from from some setup issues, but uh, out of that challenge bore this uh, product. Nice. And man, these things wear like iron. So yeah, I've heard amazing. That. Just a, just to let everybody know, I, I see Neil Owens heading out. So good night, buddy. Uh, yeah. We've only got twenty pitchers left, so we're we're okay. getting there. So just, <laughs> Sorry, just don't man. think that this is going to drag on for another three hours. It's uh, 
yeah. or, or stick around guys. It's, it's yeah. still good. We still have a lot of people in the chat and, yeah, so and 65, it went up to 66. So one more yeah. joined us right now. Right um, so yeah, let's, let's keep her going. We've only yeah. got a few pictures left. So yeah. um, don't, don't bail. Cause you think we're going to go all night. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, and just to update those who just joined us, Rich's new sled is going to be rocking. <laughs> <laughs> I can live vicariously through him and his, all his upgrades he's getting here. So this was just a, a fun picture I was playing. I took a sister photo to this with the uh, Arctic cat in focus and the shock blurry. Um, awesome. But this was a cat that came in that we were revalving and... Uh, <laughs> I so thought that was part of the shock, Gary. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Look at that. Is that a special? There's a, that's yeah, a that's second. Right. Uh... It's a stage 5M with microphone. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It's a second yeah. reservoir coming out. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, so, yeah, we're just servicing that shot. Yeah. Um, there's our, another shot. There's a thing of beauty. Like, they're, they're, just, they're just beautiful machines. <laughs> I'm telling you. And that one's got the uh, Motul uh, suspension tuner. They call it a tuner. It's it's a digital tape measure on the back of the machine, which we do sell here for those uh, customers and th those people watching that are uh, keen on working on their own torsion springs and they're out in the garage at night and they don't want to drag their, their wife or their kids off the couch to help them. This, this tool allows you to... Uh, 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 quantify awesome. sags, mimic weights, and see what uh, the weights are uh, from the handlebar. You have those in stock, John? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right I can't wait for your website to get to get up, but I don't know. I don't know if my pocketbook is. <laughs> hey, Christmas is coming. Right. Yeah. Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> we got our our swag too. So we nice. got uh, hoodies and new. New shirts uh, in stock that, too. That tool, I, I, you know what? We don't I, mind. We don't mind free swag for the show, do we, Rich? <laughs> no, not at all. Actually, no. I'm glad you mentioned that, John. I didn't like. I had no idea when you mentioned that about measuring the sag, and I thought that thing's probably worth a few thousand dollars. Like I'm, you know, just looking yeah, at because it, it looks like a heavy. Right? No, but like yeah. I, I didn't even think. And then now you're saying you sell them. That's awesome. Two hundred, two hundred and twelve dollars for that wow. tool. Yeah. You get you go splits on it with a buddy too, there, Rich. Oh yeah, uh, Merry Christmas! It's in my stocking. Yeah. Oh, look at that, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gary. If you zoom up to the handlebars, you might see the Bluetooth display. Oh yeah, you can. The little yeah, yellow see it? It's, it's yellow. Yeah, it's on it. the it's on the handlebar. Also, oh, so it's a, a two piece. It's a it's a two part. Okay. Yeah, so you can sit on the sled and do it yourself, and, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. yeah. Pretty cool. You want a close up of it? It's right here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty wild. That's funny. Sometimes now it's like, hey, Brad Hitchcock, you still out there? And then he, he answers, yep. Okay, just checking on you, LOL. <laughs> Thanks, checking. And Everybody's up. making sure we're all still alive. We're all there, still right? here. Right? <laughs> we haven't put too many to sleep. That's we awesome. got to no, gotta do it. Everyone's 24. still here. We got to do oh, a 24 right hour. Can you make him big here? Yeah. Okay. Bring, bring John in big here. I just want to see. That is cool. So, this is the, the handlebar display, yep. right? That you can put on the handlebar. And then this, just try to get the glare off there. And they named it after me, too, the Slacker. Slacker? <laughs> yeah. That is cool. So, it's super cool. It allows us to, uh, to work on torsion springs and, uh, you know, because you can put torsion springs in the machine. And then uh, mimic weights, rider weights, passenger weights, gear weights, so you know where to set your preload for each for each uh, combination, right? That's to wild. stay at around three three and a half inches a sag. That's so yeah, awesome. that's that tool we sell it. I think it's two hundred and twelve bucks. Mm -hmm. um, and then you don't need the um, you don't need the the Bluetooth display. Uh, you can download their free app. Okay. On your phone, little Motul symbol there. Oh, uh, wow! In the bottom yeah. corner, beside yeah. next to McDonald's. So what do you right have next to McDonald's? McDonald's out. <laughs> you know? There's a story behind that. <laughs> <laughs> I see the Polaris Ride Command app too. Yeah, yeah. Ride yeah. Command, Ride Command, McDonald's, and Motul app. What <laughs> what more apps do you need? Yeah, absolutely. Snowmobilers app, right? That's awesome. So yeah, you can uh, download their app, and then you can record 
uh, and add notes like uh, this is this spring or this yeah. weight combo or whatever and, and save it in your save That's it in cool. your phone. It's a pretty Sweet. cool app. So. Right on. Yeah. After cool. watch some of John and Jen's videos, I bought that slacker too, Greg says. Nice. Yeah. Time is now. Yeah. He's got one. He's got it. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, here. I got to get big again. That's what she said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We could have we could have said that about a hundred times. I know. Yeah. I know. I didn't know we were gonna play that game. Uh, you got me now. <laughs> For the office fans out there. That's right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Oh, look how dry that shaft is yeah. up there. <sighs> oh. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Sometimes I get the camera out and I just grab shots and stuff and oh for sure. Uh, so like a before and after type thing. Look at all this. This is neat. So this is funny. This is um, uh, remember I mentioned we we inked a deal with Eng with Elka to do the engineering for the Renegade and the MXZ trail platform stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then I send uh, I measure up, for example, the new uh, I did in one shot. I did the um, MXZ X R motion the the mxz and the xrs um and the renegade and the renegade xrs those four models at one time and to do shock fitment for all four and then i send those i fill out a big bill of materials sheet send it to elka engineering and then they send me the raw parts and then i hand assemble the shocks and then i check calibration and fitment in the snowmobile to make sure the resis aren't running into anything, that kind of thing. And, uh, and then the shock will, I, I kind of find, uh, give sure. that the green light and then the shock will go into production or I may uh, work on valving over that winter to just to confirm that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, everything is within the window that it should be. And, uh, and then the shock goes into production. So that's so this, literally all the parts to the shock. The, yeah. Everything. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That is wild. Yeah. You oh. can see that. The shim stacks, they've actually yeah. put and then just thrown a tie wrap through them so that they're the not ones. Yeah. 20 individual shims. So. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Look yeah, at it's, that I'm, yeah, I'm very lucky to have created that relationship with yeah, them and, and it's been very mutual and very beneficial. And uh, yeah, well, there's a, helping there's them a neat, out used too. <laughs> yeah, there's a neat story. They weren't into snowmobile shocks in 2010. No. And, and I said, why the hell not? It's it's double A arm. It's just like an ATV. And you guys are are global champions in ATV racing and you don't do snowmobiles. It's just a ski, not a wheel. Yeah. And, and they were like, no, 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 we don't want to do anything and do it half ass. We don't want to do a, a poor job and get into something we're not familiar with. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Build yeah. me a shock 18 and a half inches long yeah, yeah. Uh, with this spring on it. And and that that's that set of shocks in my 2010 uh, vector were the yeah. first pretty well the first set that they ever built. Wow! And, then, yeah, and look at I, it now. Wow. And then I hand built um, a rear shock after just about uh, going ass over tea kettle because the front end worked so good. I come into a set of stutter bumps and yeah. bottom the rear so hard. Yeah. Um, so then I made a, a rear shock. Uh, out of parts from left over from the road race program. And, and I said, guys, we got to do this. This, this stuff is game changing snowmobiles. And now you own half the company. <laughs> yeah. I wish. yeah. I wish I did. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, now they're probably doing three or 4 million a year in snowmobile sales. Good. For, oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, they got you to thank for it, so that's good. That's good. Job. Yeah, or, that's awesome. or curse one or the other. Yeah. Or curse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I doubt they're cursing you. Well, we got Broadway Lane. Thanks, buddy. Oh wait a minute! I where'd my sound effect go? There we go. Any oh, set up pro tips for an old 1998 XCR 440 for vintage cross country racing? John is a legend. Just send it, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, Just send yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 is there anything you can do on something like that or is that oh, getting yeah, yeah. Right we we actually do a ton of work for the, VR, <laughs> the vrra john j carl goes ibuprofen <laughs> <laughs> sorry team, team tylenol yeah, yeah. See, go ahead finish sorry 
Yeah. Um, the VRRA is Vintage Road Race Association, and uh, and we do a lot of work with those guys, and it's it's pretty cool. Um, did Gary forget to charge up his laptop <laughs> again? He's, there? He, he's batted out. I guess well, he's running my, out of juice. It's oh, my camera. Bat, it's my camera. Hang on. You can't blame the yeah. sun, Gary. He's not no. here to, playing video games no. he's at university right <laughs> no actually he's, he's still home oh yeah. is he home right on yeah, yeah he's, he's just finishing off his reading week so oh, it'll right come on. back on right gary uh, we can still hear gary so yeah so. It'll, it'll come back on we're good and i'm more of a face for radio anyway <laughs> <laughs> oh that was my problem so john this is you out testing uh, i imagine What's it is we um, Halliburton Forest has been so kind to us over okay. the years when we when we test. You know they treat us so well. Um, they you know they help us out usually with with rent cabin rental for our team. And uh, but man, do they have a beautiful facility. Yeah. Um, last winter, uh, this was so much fun because that's a photo of my daughter and my wife, oh, and we were uh, they. Jen, my doc, my my wife was testing her 21 MXZ850, which we bought for her, mm -hmm. and uh, we started off bone stock, like how it came out of the dealer. Right. And her and my wife went out for 25 minutes, and they switched twice and came back, and and she just wrote down her impressions in a notebook. Right. Um, she's such a good tester. That's and then my, it was funny to hear my daughter echo her impressions. Um, and then what we did, stage two, was we maxed out, we improved the setup of the snowmobile stock. Like we set the limiter strap, we backed the ski preload to zero, and we set the torsion springs to hit sag. Mm -hmm. And then we sent them both out again. Mm -hmm. And then they both wrote it again and came back and were just blown away by how much better it was. Nice. And then we started to, we, we went through spring kits and we went through, uh, uh, we, I had, I had cheated. I'd put in an adjustable strap, but I had ground it and graduated it in, in the OEM limiter strap locations. Right. So it mimicked me changing holes just quickly. Right. Right. And uh, so then we, we went through three setups with the stock snowmobile and then we put in the Elkas and, and it was so fun to watch my daughter and my wife go through the process of, of, of testing a machine from out of the showroom to improved showroom, yeah. to improved stock to full setup, full and, setup and, yeah. and just record their impressions and that's her there. That's, yeah, Jen there. that's awesome. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, and it's like don't even talk to anybody. Just yep, just go do it and the, don't yeah. go. And I tell racers <clears throat> that don't go bench racing with somebody you were dragging yep. handlebars with. Yeah, get the notes down and debrief with your crew chief. Yeah, right away. Or and maybe the crew chief is your dad or your girlfriend or you. You know, um, you just get your impressions down uh, right away, and then and then you can quantify the the changes and the improvements. Right. Yeah. No, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. And that that is myself and Mark Wilkins. Um, so Jen and Alyssa were testing OEM setups. Mm -hmm. And Mark was on like level 32 of our <laughs> of our uh, out there Custom. ideas, you yeah. know, nice. in terms of uh, uh, you know, we've we've got stuff that is so good we I won't sell it because um uh, we're worried how fast you can go on these setups. Um, <laughs> and and we, we worry, we get off our sleds and we look at each other and say, can you imagine the general public having access, access to, to this stuff? To this? Yep. It would elevate, you know, if it got into the wrong hands, it would, <laughs> it would elevate. Speed. Everyone doing a buck 40 on the trails. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's so the Autobahn. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. It's like so the back we, to the future DeLorean, man. Like right? yeah, you have to destroy it. Yeah, yeah. with the Avro yeah. Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but Mark is always testing, you know, we we this in this um in this instance we were we were working on different rebound settings inside the shock absorber. 
mm -hmm. um, because we were we were finding that you know the time that it was taking for the the sled to recover after a deep bump was too was too slow and it was taking weight off of the skis at too many instances in time right yeah and that's what you're doing here yeah this is the slacker uh yeah. reading 130 so for those of us in imperial that is five inches of sag Ooh, so this yeah. is when when we realized just how soft that our motion x skid was and and my wife is 145 pounds right she's a tall um, tall uh, woman and uh, sh so she's you know what would a 200 pound guy you know he would crush yeah. that thing to yeah. death right yeah that's wow. awesome yeah so that's when we knew we had to come up with some torsion springs you know what john that statement you just made me i'm sorry but i'm bringing my xcr to you <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> like, i can't take that what you just said out <laughs> well yeah yeah. It's called the secret special 1% customer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, sometime is now my buddy there. Yeah. He has a great question on Skidoo. They run a single arc cat uses two limiter straps. Oh, yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. The new cat comes with two limiter straps. Um, would one have to purchase two adjustable straps? Absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um so Skidoo got away through their engineering by cost cost cutting. Yeah. And they used to be uh, two straps back in the 90s. Yes, in the they 80s. Did. I remember that. But remember my comment about an hour ago about the, um, the skid is bolted into the tunnel in four yes. places. Yeah. One strap is fine. Yeah. Yeah. What we do on a on a cat or a Yamaha is we'll leave the stock strap in the right hand side. Um for redundancy and put the adjustable strap in the left side so that if the strap ever broke um you've got the backup but if it's set up if the stocks is set up full long then it's never it's never in the in the equation it's just there as a seat belt basically yeah. Yeah. so yeah. Th is this what are you doing here john you're is that oh, a this, this is mark wilkins shock okay we, we had the service trailer in Halbert Forest um, with the heaters going. And I think if you zoom in on that shock, it's still covered in ice. And yeah. I've taken it apart and revalved it. Yeah, you got the heat oh, going there. That's it. Yeah, you got the heat heat on it. Yeah, <clears throat> it was kind of cool. I'm taking this shock apart and it was still covered in ice. So That's awesome. Uh, when, when I raced Grand Prix bikes, it was funny. <laughs> I had a transmission in my hand. I was changing internal drive ratios and it was so hot from being on the track. I couldn't hold it. And, and yet I had it in my hand. So that's wild. It was kind of neat. Those bikes are designed to be worked on and you could get the transmission out in like 25 minutes and it was still hot from the track. So it was that's kind awesome. of a, the reverse there on the, in the service trailer. Yeah. Pro player says the XCR has two straps. Yeah. 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 So it's, they're right. just, Players. they're just, um, yeah, they're just, uh, yep. you know, being cautious, I guess. Um, you they know, have LED one, lights one works too. fine. How many, how many, <laughs> yeah. there, how many people, uh, yeah, the blades and awesome light. Um, how many people work at your company, John? Oh yeah. Good question. Uh, there is, there is six of us, five of us. I'm hesitating because my wife and I aren't on the payroll for, <laughs> per you know it's a sole proprietorship that the two of us own mm -hmm. and then we have generally three people on on staff three full-time nice. people on nice. staff. nice that's, that's good because that's awesome. i can you're... tell but i can tell it's lean by just what we're seeing here you know yep. and yep. the people involved and everything that's yep. really good yeah. it's it it's, good. it's a nice size and um it's not out of hand um but the biggest thing is training you know mm -hmm. it takes us probably a year before yeah. somebody can work without supervision mm -hmm. um you know in, in what we do uh like i've got techs now um matt who's been with me probably a year and a half is now just not bringing me every shock that i've got enough trust in him that that you know he he does work and and, and ships it out and i don't check it you nice. know but but we we have processes in the building here 
where when any one of us finishes a customer job, uh, one of the other technicians goes over it. Double checks uh, it, yeah. And double checks it with a critical eye to see if we've missed greasing a pivot point or we ever catch a loose bolt, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, mm -hmm. um, it's not a fast process, but it's, you know, yeah. nice. It's, it's a good process. So this was, uh, we talked about that day when, and this was stage four or five. You can tell it's in the afternoon now by the sun, but we're now removing the OEM shocks and installing the Elka for Jen to finish testing her day on her new, uh, Nice. The new 21 uh, MXZ 850. Nice. Awesome. This one might have a problem with that right shock. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to save some weight there, though. Yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, we've got the angle finder on the tail of a torsion spring, I, I think is what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the foreground is me approaching the socket or uh, approaching the preload with an, a ratchet and a socket okay. to, to make some changes. So we, we calibrated that, uh, yeah. Okay. That's, that's an old skidoo, right? With the three, the, the three sided plastic. Um, mm -hmm. preload yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're, you know how we talked earlier about torsion spring being rated in, um, in rate and degrees of preload. Yep. So that's that preload number 80, 90, or 100 is on the workbench, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I'm remeasuring it in application and then throwing the preload to see what kind of a change we can expect um, at, at the snowmobile, right? Yeah, right on. And then we 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 quantify that and measure what's it doing to sag. And and with with all that data, we then feel more confident in saying, okay, Gary. You need this torsion spring at this preload position to hit this sag number. So plug plug it in and you're good to go. Nice. Nice. No axis. Uh, I think I was putting a um, set of skidoo ice scratchers ice on. Ice scratchers on, yeah. I was looking at that. There they are. Yeah. <clears throat> Those are my favorite ice scratchers in the whole world, Bill. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're tidy. I can look at my temperature on my dash and then reach back and unclick them at 80, I mean, 50 kilometers an hour yeah. and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and drop them down without yeah. even looking and yeah. they can go forward, reverse, reverse yeah. Uh, yeah. no problem. So, yeah. Ooh, look at this. That's, Ooh, what that's happened there? Jim Skid. That's what Jim happened? Skid. See the preload? Zoom in on the preload uh, perch. No, sorry, the spring spring perch on the rail there. Oh yeah, God. she's just she's destroyed. Foobar. It's cut through, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the spring went through, stabbed the track, bent the torsion spring, and ruined the track. Look how dry that is. Yeah. Was, uh, 12. You know, retired school teacher with a <laughs> with a 10-year-old sled, and I'm billing him like twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Over yeah. lack of maintenance. So yeah. you know, on my Facebook page, we're always trying to throw tips out there and yep. whenever we see something stupid or uh, i don't mean jim by any yeah. means no we, no we no. see something preventable right yep. so yeah we, true we, yep. we try to give people the heads up hey grease look, that look, fix look, that look at the spring yeah like, yeah wow yeah. just right friction around. and dry and rust right like that's unreal well, that yeah, all that damage happened track. when the spring, the spring stabbed and then went around. Went around, yeah, yeah and it would yeah, bend it. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Nice shop. Like, it's nice and clean. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah, nice this was the too. that was uh, was Brent and uh, and Jeff um, from S Snowmobiler TV. We've we've had them in our shop a few times, and yeah, uh, he's a great guy. He is yeah, a nice they're, guy. Jeff's a great a, guy. Such I like a great ally. I, I love his videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should get him on here too. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I don't think there'd be any uh, conflict of interest. Uh, he's a he's no. a super guy. Yeah. He's a he's a sled head. It's a All through and bit, through. Little bit of trivia. Do, do you remember sled head? Yeah, he yeah. was sled head. So I worked with them back when Bruce Mellenbacher and John, God rest his soul, yeah, were together. Yeah, he's that's he's sled awesome. With, with Christine, yep. But yeah, Jeff, Jeff. Trying to point the right way. Jeff yeah. Steenbacher was sled ed. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. In costume, right? So yeah. that's awesome, yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. He's a yeah. super guy. Super guy. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Hmm. There There's a awesome. slacker again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's see awesome. the. Uh, let's talk for a minute. Well, we could talk about coupler blocks for a whole show, but see, <laughs> see behind the coupler block, the red scissor stop. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's it's smacking the black arm coming up from the motion uh sticker mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that is what is responsible for topping up when we jump our snowmobiles okay and it is not a pleasant uh it's bang right it mm -hmm. tops mm -hmm. up with a bang yeah so when people say oh i don't need torsion springs i just run them on number four or five right so now you really can't accommodate any extra weight if you're at maximum and springs torsion springs hate being at maximum because yeah. they've got all that extra 20 degrees of 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 rotation jammed into the preload and when you're going through the whoops that scissor stop right there is going bang bang bang, 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 bang. Right? Yeah, yeah. where if you had the right torsion spring in with preload on number one it mm -hmm. just goes through the whoops like this it's not smashing against the scissor stop that's something um... Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a it's it's residual energy from preload in the spring is what's topping up those those snowmobiles so hard, right? Yeah, yeah. We a lot of times if you pay attention, yeah, you go through the whoops and you hear bang 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 bang, and you think it's the skid bottoming, but it's often not. It's the skid topping up from excessive preload, wrong torsion springs. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome information. No, that is good. And especially on an R Motion X, where I, I noticed night and day difference from the old R Motion when I rode one in, in the spring. And it was, it's, uh, it's interesting to hear what improvements you can make just on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're very, you know, I don't knock the Skidoo engineering. There are some sharp cookies designing stuff, but I think we can make some improvements in the final calibration. Yeah. That's uh, just a couple shots of, my daughter's uh, old rev and then my my wife that's the sled that we we replaced when she bought her uh 21 mxz 850 we replaced that that xs or xp uh 9 yeah, that's that's an xs yeah xs yeah there. that's that nice. rev like, mint look at how look at how level those a arms are too on that the rev the looks brand new awesome. it looks brand new yeah yeah rich when i walked by that 900 Yep. At, at Gateway, I thought it was new. Yeah, that's unreal. And it's, it's a 2014. I wow. Well, I don't want to say I stole that. They gave me a, a, an amazing deal, and it allowed us to put it into our fleet uh, the, nice. two years ago. And we, we worked on uh, Elka setups for that chassis. Nice. And that chassis handles so good. It is so much flatter and lower mm -hmm. stock to stock than the Gen 4, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's, I guess we could say it needs less work to get really good than the Gen Four does. Isn't it Gen amazing, Four, eh? we can get them as good, but it needs more work. Yeah, yeah. I love the XS chassis. It's yeah. night and day different than the XP, <clears throat> even though they look kind of the same and some of the dimensions are similar. It's just such a good. It it it's elevated that much more. I've got a, a revolution video, and I talk about that. Um, the different models of the the sleds and and the changes from each but yeah it's pretty close to the gen 4 um gen 4 has got a little bit better balanced engine and stuff but yeah. um ergonomic wise or or whatever you'd call that engineer wise of the suspension and the the a arms and everything else the xs was ahead of the game oh yeah, yeah that we can we can rip on that sled and yeah it's funny yeah. the 900 motor is so tame the non-turbo that, uh, and quiet and smooth. You don't even hear them. I know. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. it's a neat snowmobile to ride. Yeah, a buddy's yeah. got a 900 Blizzard, and he'll pull up beside you, and you don't even realize it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so this is a this is a previous to the Gen 4 XRS, and the poor customer could hardly get the thing around a corner, and I couldn't believe the AR mango when he brought it in, 21. and. Uh, and we put a spring kit on it 
and got her down to just about zero, and uh, and he was blown away with the improvement of it. Those so are cranked right angle. up too, though. Look at the angle. Oh, they're yeah. they're heavier springs than stock with like thirty mil of preload in them. He just he was going the wrong way. He was adding preload to try and push yeah. the carbides in yeah. and get the thing to turn. He says it turns, but then it just rolls over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Center of gravity. That's wild. That is set up to jump a house. Yeah. yeah. Now it was just a tundra I bought last year uh, off of my friends at HP Cycle, nice. and uh, and um, uh, we we were working on shock packages for it because we get a lot of uh, interest from uh, uh, our friends in Newfoundland about uh, the shocks for the the um, the those skids, the one fifty four, the the T motion and the C motion. Uh, uh, skids and the uh, the that's an SC five U skid in that thing. So it's a it's a variant of the of the SC five utility, but yeah. but it uses actually uses our motion shocks shocks in there. So sweet, yeah, that's cool. And that's it. I told everybody what? when it oh, we got hard. through. Look at I that. Know. I know. Isn't that's that awesome. awesome? Yeah, it's, it's well, the cool. knowledge so, is unreal, John. That's what everyone's just saying here. Like, unreal. Like, I made. I it learned all a ton, man. Like, I made it'd it all be nice up. to have you back. Like, seriously. Like, oh, absolutely. Like, that's that was awesome. A really good. Well, job yeah. Here. If you you know if you guys want to pull your the people that we're watching tonight, and if you know we went over a lot of stuff, but if they have some more dedicated questions or specific questions that we we didn't touch on, yeah, we'd be happy to do that again. No problem. That's great. Oh, that's great. No, appreciate that's your cool. time. That's cool. And your yeah. knowledge. Like, man, yeah, I learned a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah well, and it, you know, if people want to visit the website and if there's one takeaway or a couple of takeaways from tonight is, you know, the, you can, you can set your machine up a lot better stock without a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. torsion springs are a hundred bucks a piece up, you know, some of our custom ones we created for the R motion X are, they're 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 a fair bit more than that because we have to modify them in house, but it's a pretty small investment to get the, at least the engineering of what's I'm thinking Skidoo right now put together is mated to your weight, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you know the dual rates up front you can go on YouTube and find those videos that ex dual rates explained is the name of a couple of videos, and uh, and the limiter strap is a is a good way to to get an introduction to our company and what we do and, and how we do it. Um, and then we can grow from there and, and perhaps look at shock packages in the future to really spoil you. Um, nice. We find winter's winter's pretty short and, mm -hmm. and we all are super passionate and love the sport so that when we do hop on that sled, mm -hmm. we want it to work awesome, you know, right. and if, For sure. if we can make it work awesome, we've, yeah, you know, we've done something and and uh, made a nice safe package for everybody. So yeah, that's good. Well, yeah, I'm telling good. you right now, John, I've never seen so many people in the, in the comments saying thank you, thank you, thank you for yeah. all the information and how much we've all learned tonight. We, we really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, we yeah, do. Well, thank you so much for the time. Four hours is our longest one yeah, ever. This has been our longest show of it, but I mean, yeah. it flew by. Like but it's it did, awesome. It did fly by. To, and, so we appreciate the time and. And uh, we talked about suspension and how it can make you better, but don't forget about traction and go to right. fasttrack.co oh, and absolutely. get your free toolkit. I'm just going to pop up that, uh, that, that banner, that billboard again. Um, and yeah. there you go. Um, Snowmobile sessions, exclusive free install tools with the purchase of a stud kit, fasttrack.co, F A S T T R A C dot C A C O. And the, the, the uh, coupon code is snow s n o w so for those mm -hmm. watching or listening to the podcast so thanks fast track for sponsoring that segment of the show thanks john for joining us and yeah, don't forget to check so. out accelerated technologies.ca where else can they find you a facebook uh, good spot yeah. As well? <clears throat> yeah thanks for asking we've got two facebook pages one one for motorcycle which was our our initial page and then due to the you know, motorcyclists and snowmobilers are very, are sometimes not the same person. Um, so, you know, we, we find a lot of people that have snowmobiles have ATVs, but not necessarily motorcycles. So we created a snowmobile Facebook page and uh, you can hop on there and go back and see, 
you know, we've got videos, a coupler blocks in action and, and all kinds of information. Like I say, there's, it's not really, I'm never really a salesman and in, in, I, I try to push education first. And, and I think the sales will come from that and keep, keep food on the table. But uh, there's, there's so much information there that we've had good response on. And, uh, and um, you know, if you have any questions, we're, we're always here. So. That's awesome. Yep, yeah, for sure. And uh, and thank you again, Energy Power Sports, for for also uh, being a big supporter of the of this show as well. So I'm going to roll the credits and just stick around, John, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll close up after this. But uh, if you're watching after the fact, there's two more videos. I think you'll you'll enjoy watching. And uh, and thanks again, everybody, for your time tonight. We really appreciate it. All the love and support and the super fans that uh, yeah, that hit great. that uh, that dollar sign button and got in on the fun. That was a lot of fun, a lot of laughs tonight too, yeah, guys. Sure. So <laughs> thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank Thanks you, to everybody who uh, sat through all this and uh, and hopefully they took away something that uh, and and we're always here to help out. That's our passion. So I know I did. Thank you so much, yeah. guys. Yeah, thanks, yeah. John. Awesome. It's a journey for